This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. It's Eric Nagel. It starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, universe. the next voice you hear... It's Eric Nagel. Thank you, Scott Shannon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. My name is Eric Nagel, and over there, from uh, living his best life in the frozen tundras of Arizona. Say hello to Jordan. Everybody. If you're doing us a kindness and listening to us on the It's Heart, uh, it's, 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 it's Heart Radio. I should rebrand it that way. It's Heart Radio. I Heart Radio app. Uh, thank you very much for doing so. If you're listening to us on Apple and Spotify later on, that's where you can really do us the kindness. Go over there and leave us a positive review. Something uh, in the five-star range would definitely help out the program. Algorithm stuff. It's just the way the world works nowadays. And if you want to join us live each and every week as we do the program, hop over to our live rooms on Twitch and on YouTube, all under It's Eric Nagel, and you can be a part of said program. Jordan, how are you? How is life treating you? It's good. Just a normal week. Nothing too crazy happening. Weather's been kind of nice, and uh, just getting ready for the weekend. All right. And uh, we're not really doing a ton of uh, Easter celebration. We don't really Who do does anything crazy anymore. But, you, know, you know, unless you're nice. really religious or have a big family where your grandparents right. are still alive, uh, that's when you have the big Easter mass going, dinner yeah. at home, that kind of thing. Um, the only thing I'm doing for Easter is ham. Ooh. Is, is uh, doing the ham there. I got a free ham. So I am I uh, going out and I'm going to enjoy. This is ham soaked in rum. It is loaded with booze. Right. Maybe some red, some uh, rum soaked ham. That sounds great. Yeah. Where's the rum yeah. ham? That's uh, going to be screaming on Sunday morning when I wake up. I'll be running down the stairs. Ah, rum ham. <laughs> when the family checks in, hey, how's your day been going? What are Just you doing? Right the Getting rip shit on ham. That's all I'm yeah, doing. Man. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll do breakfast, and then at night I'll get rip shit on ham. <laughs> Getting rip shit on ham. There you go. Sounds good. Hit the wrong button. But recovered nicely. Yeah, so that's about Easter. Something for the kid. That's about it. Uh, yeah. Not I was going to say, holiday, just there's nothing to do. It's one of those well, lackluster holidays where if you're really religious, it means something. Other than right. that, it's just another day. Yeah. Um, don't really do a ton. Like we don't do a ton of baskets. I mean, we're they're both well past the go hunting for eggs bit. Right. So maybe buy a bunch of candy, do a nice breakfast, and just kind of take it easy for the most part, and just get rip shit on ham later. Getting rip shit on ham. That's what you do. Get some <laughs> ham. Have you and the kids eating like mouthfuls of it, and then you put the yeah. as they call memeing. Uh, put a caption on there. Getting rip shit on ham. Because definitely, I will be doing that on Sunday. That'll be my new Christmas uh, card this year because uh, a couple years ago, during the, uh, the 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 pandemic times, I remember I was separating a bunch of flour out. I bought a big bag of flour and I was separating out in bags to hand out to like family so we'd have stuff. Right. So I took a nice big picture of uh, a bunch of stacks of bags full of of uh, white powder and I put it all over my nose, all over Wesley's nose, and then uh, we took a picture and I sent it out as a Christmas card. It was great. Yeah, that could they, probably the get was, a call from the school Christmas. district. Well, yeah. I mean, it was before school, so now I can I got away with it. So. All right. Crazy it's things happening over in the Jordan has household there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get rip shit on ham, and we're having a white Christmas. It's going to be really fun. Getting rip shit on ham. Got to be getting rip shit on ham. Right. Easter. That's the new moniker. <laughs> you have Holy Thursday, Good Friday. I don't think Saturday has anything, and then Sunday no. is Easter colon subtitle getting rip shit on ham that's what you do i think we should start it it's a new hashtag we're gonna throw out there it'll be fucking awesome <laughs> um oh <clears throat> before we get into everything else here so somebody i know stopped by today and uh was dropping some stuff off and said oh i got this for you and i go and look and i said okay why because you know <laughs> why would i just say oh thank you and, and uh and yeah. keep my mouth shut uh, they said, well, it's Ew, the presentation why? was, it's like, well, I know, um, you love Arnold Palmer's. I, I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking they have some new kind of, uh, half and half concoction for me to try. It's like, oh, I got you this. So maybe you could try it on your show. Okay. 
I go, I look, and I go, well, yeah, well, this is not uh, half and half, but um, okay, if you want me to do so, I, I will do that. So, and I haven't seen this before either, but uh, this is a, it says a pint of Captain Morgan sliced up Long Island iced tea. Ooh. So well, that might be tasty. Yeah, I mean, it is. I'm not really a drinking person, but all right. I did, uh, I did see the, the uh, sun kissed, um, smells very lemony. The sun kissed uh, alcohol, the multi pack, the pack. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna grab that probably like maybe even this weekend. I'm waiting for the summer. Then, I'll do that. It, uh, that's something yeah, I need. So I mean, it's too. seltzery, that's fine, but it's something I need to do sitting outside in the heat. Yeah, but uh. Anyway, this is uh, Long Island Iced Tea, Captain Morgan, 8% alcohol by volume. Ooh, drink it fast, so the, sec- the segment two could be I should have shaken fun. it up and then bite into it when they do the <laughs> shotgun thing. I was going to say, is it carbonated or is it not carbonated? Um, It is not carbonated. It's not bad, actually. I don't think What's I really it? drink ice- Long Island Iced Teas, but that's not bad. Nice. Those are always dangerous. Interesting. Long Island iced teas. Like, you just don't realize you're drinking a ton of alcohol, and the next thing you know, you're just rip shit on ham. Getting rip shit on ham. Getting rip shit on ham. So, all right. um, I'll drink this for the rest of the show. We'll see how that experiment goes. If it becomes a problem, you have control. You can either (laughs) mute me or turn this off. So, whatever you feel you need to do, I'm giving you permission to uh, um, commandeer the show. and the captain uh, now. Yeah. Our buddy Tom from Alberta saying 8% alcohol, so the same as a beer. I will take your word for it because I don't well, do that Canadian either, beer, so. maybe. Yeah, isn't it like 5% uh, for the bottle buds and stuff? Usually like 3 to 5%, yeah. Yeah. Anything higher than that's usually like a, a craft beer of some kind. All right. It sounds well, good, Somebody's though. sending me a job opportunity. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. Um, oh, Heather's in the chat. She's saying it's 5% generally. Okay, so yeah, that's what I thought. Light beers are less. All right. Well, this is a pint, which is seven and a half fluid out. No. This can't be. It says one pint is seven and a half fluid ounces. This is 23.5 fluid ounces. So this is multiple pints. All right. Whatever. (laughs) Can's kind of cool looking. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks festive, draws the eye, makes you want to grab it. Not what I was expecting to do today, but alas, here we are. Yeah, here we go. All right, so lots going on uh, and lots to talk about today. So yes, Easter weekend is this weekend, and then Passover, I thought it was one of... I can never get the the Christian and the the Jewish holidays right, because the schedules always change. You know how like Hanukkah can be really close to Christmas or it could be like right after Thanksgiving, it floats, right? Yeah. So the same thing I thought Easter and Passover kind of overlapped. Apparently it doesn't because Passover is not till April 22nd through the 30th right. of this year. Well, I think it's, I, I think what happens the same with Easter, it's, um, it's all based off of the calendar and how the seasons line up and the equinox and all that stuff. So I think it all happened a little earlier this year, and that's why we're celebrating Easter on the 31st versus sometime in April. So gotcha. that's what's happening, and that's why it's kind of everything kind of fluctuates. Uh, I want to clear up some personal business oh, okay. before we get so. into everything here. Jordan and I are part of this music app mm. where you get to uh, pick <laughs> songs for a category and then vote on them. Mm. And I don't have notifications on my phone for anything. Right. So uh, I never know when it's my turn to vote. Right, I'm, I'm usually I'm usually last to vote, and then I get yelled at by the person who uh, oversees all of this, and <laughs> rightfully so because apparently I, I I'm keeping things from progressing. So I uh, I went, I voted. Uh, so I went, I put my songs in, and then I voted before everybody. So I'm technically right now ahead of the game, but I'm sure next week I'll have forgotten again and get yelled at that I haven't uh, picked my songs for round three. I mean, we are still waiting on the bucket list category for you to to, to uh, vote. Wait, where along is with this our one? Good Giddles. Oh crap! We have to we have to finish up the old one. Oh and, okay. Uh, you are the first to vote on the new so one. Then so then I can't the I, I can't be very braggadocious on this because now I'm although I'm ahead on one, <laughs> I'm behind on the other. So right, none of this is. Uh, 
this is this is none of this is working. So, all right. Make note to self that I need to do that. <laughs> all right. Done. Moving on. Uh, so Easter, Passover, we talked about that. Baseball starting. I could Today. care less. Um, wow. The only thing I care less about is when they say it's opening day is the people who go around in February saying pitchers and catchers are reporting. It's like, I, I, I don't care. I could right. not care less about any of this stuff. And I grew up a baseball fan. I grew up a New York Mets fan. And I think I punched out 94 when the strike happened and they didn't have the World Series and all that stuff. I think that's where I lost interest. And uh, and then I was done. Having were, cared about it when, since. Uh, you wore a giant 10-gallon hat and you kept asking how the nine Mets were playing. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I I can care less because I was baseball. trying to blend it's, in so I could get my immigration status. <laughs> yeah, it's been a big uh, big deal all over my social media, and I'm just like, oh, is that it? Really? Just like, let's get over it. So yeah, opening day for baseball. It's big the last Diamondbacks country that you're in. We are. Oh yeah. No, I know. I already got invited to go to opening day. I unfortunately could not because I believe it's tonight, um, and we're doing the show. So right. show takes precedence unless it's a concert I really want to go to. That's or, very no, kind of you to do just don't so because be it no, doesn't because take precedence for me. If I got baseball tickets, I probably would have went and then yeah, not, not a, done the show. Baseball's fine to attend. I don't pay attention that much. Like it's usually just you know we hang out, socialize, drink a beer or two. But yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge. It's not. Like, it's follower. slow. It's boring. It's you know, and then there's always some guy that's taking it too seriously because they're filling in all the pitches and stuff into the program. Right. That you know, I thought that generation died off already. That did that still, but apparently there's still people. Uh, hot dogs fourteen dollars and drinks Oof, are too expensive and. There's just nothing the fun. Oh, they got the a they got a cheesesteak place in here, or they got some yeah. upscale kind of thing. Great. I don't want to. I don't want that at the ballpark, and I don't want to spend that much money at the ballpark. So yeah, I, I don't think go. the prices here in Arizona for the Diamondbacks, as far as like food goes, I think they actually have some of the cheapest concessions in the league. So it's not too bad. But again, I, I don't care enough. So it will be the last time I bring up baseball unless I'm attending a game and I bring it up. But there you go. Opening opening day for you baseball fans. All right. We'll have fun with that. <laughs> um, so we have that. There was a couple other things before we start getting into the news. Stuff. Wait, Joe Lieberman died? Yeah. Oh, former senator and uh, presidential candidate. Right. Joe Lieberman passed away. I was not aware of that at the age of 82. Yep. Apparently he had a fall and then there was complications from the fall. I would also think he fell when he was 82. So there's a good chance that was probably going to kill him anyway. Yeah. Well, we thought that was going to happen with Jimmy Carter and he fell last year. That man will not die. Right. And he just. He's uh, still going. He's he was still put going. in hospice before he's his He's got wife, more houses his to died. build. He's not yeah, done with. He's not done in this world yet. Yeah. No, Joe Lieberman uh, was the one that really kind of pioneered the you know video game rating system that came out yeah. especially around when mortal Kombat one was such a big deal and uh he wanted to ban them constitutionally and i'm like funnator yeah as much as uh shit people like to throw out the republicans for books you go back in a bit in history and look at the liberals like well they're the ones that complain about video games they're the ones that got the uh the parental warnings on albums mm-hmm. you know all that stuff there i'm like so you know what they're just as bad both sides are say, just, wasn't it was it wasn't it Tipper Gore? Yeah. Was she led the uh, she the led the committee one? for it. Yeah. Yeah. You're both equally bad. Just leave our shit alone. Worry about <laughs> fixing bridges and closing an opening and reestablishing borders. All, all of that stuff. That's what they're paid to do there for. Stop worrying about the shit that I'm watching, I'm listening to, the video games that I'm playing. Let me be the parent of my children. Yes. Or let me parent myself. Where's your kids? I don't know. Now, most people <laughs> shouldn't parent themselves, but some can do it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to give uh, some attention to. So, this is a one-two punch. Chad Dukes. So, Chad uh, just did our pal uh, Dave Lando show. Oh, in, uh, in Dallas. In Dallas, Normal World nice. on the Blaze. Yeah, so he just did that show. And uh, I'm trying to bring it up here so you can see it. 
There it is. Uh, as we do the show, it'll air in about 48 minutes. So when it starts going live, I'll uh, I'll see if maybe we switch over and, and take a little peek at what's going on there. But okay. it will be available after that point uh, on YouTube. If you go to Normal World on YouTube and find that stuff, you can see Chad on there. I think Very I'm going cool. back in May. I think they, they just called me about coming back on to do stuff. Mm. So I think I'm going in May. And uh, I'll let you know when when that's all scheduled. All right, so let's move on to some of the major stuff here. Um, you know, these are we were trying to avoid this, but alas, we cannot. Yes, it's been a big week, two weeks in disasters Yeah, between hot air balloon uh, accidents and then um, a got, man getting hit by balloons. a train and his leg being stolen. But we got to start off with the <laughs> big story, article. which is, the, of course, the bridge in Baltimore falling. And I, I want to point this out. So the other night, I'm, a, I'm working, I'm awake when right. it starts breaking about the, the bridge collapse. Yeah. So I go online, I'm talking, hopping, yeah. I hop onto, you know, whatever news feeds are streaming to see, you know, what was going on. And at that time, you didn't know how many people were off, missing off the bridge until like a few hours later, but I was already mm-hmm. sleeping at that point. So it, it turns out it was only like seven people and they've yeah, rescued like two, workers. one or two of them have been rescued Yeah, and the rest are Look, you fall into that cold, dark ocean. Unless you're near something to prop yourself up, you're not lasting long because hypothermia is just going to get you before exhaustion does right? and before you can swim to everything. I have to say I am amazed it's only seven people for the coordination that they had between the ship radioing into like the Coast Guard or, or whoever that they were in full May Day. They had a fire going. They lost power. The boat's heading towards the bridge. How fast the police or state troopers or whoever scrambled to block off the edges of the bridge because you Mm -hmm. watch that time lapse video and you're still seeing trucks and stuff going over. Then finally, uh, the bridge is kind of cleared before it hits. So, you know, thank God it wasn't like rush hour traffic in the morning. I thought of that, too. I'm like sitting there going because it was probably close to... What was it close to midnight my time? So it was two, three in the morning your time. And that's when it was right. kind of breaking around that time. And I had sent, I was like, found it. And I was like, holy crap. And I kept thinking, what if this was in the afternoon? What if this was during a peak time where things were going? Because every before it happened, you can see one or two cars maybe go by. And then there was no traffic. And then the bridge goes down. And I'm sitting there going, I wonder if there were a lot of cars on there and stuff like that. And apparently there was just a lot of workers. Like there's like there was bridge workers on there. Yeah. But thankfully, this, I mean, this is bad. And I'm not short selling it at all, but this could have been way worse casualty wise. It could have, one. Number two, looking at, and I'm not doing what everybody else does where they read shit online and then everybody becomes an expert of whatever tragic event happens and they try to to marry this, themselves into it. But the bridge isn't that old. It's from like the late 70s. Late 70s, yeah. And. The way they built the bridge at the time is not how they do it now, where that bridge, when it's everything's all in place, is structurally sound and amazing. Can what the, you know, the weight it distributes, the balance, the holds, the sways from the wind, what have you. Mm-hmm. But if you hit one particular spot, the whole thing falls apart. A lot of infrastructure now, the newer infrastructure, if you uh, hit the leg of a bridge or something like that, Part of it's going to go, but the rest of it isn't, you know, it, it, who right. knows how long it will stay structurally sound after that uh, incident, but the whole thing's not going to come down like that. Yeah. So that was what I was reading into. It's like, well, we've made updates to infrastructure that was built the old way and they have put new safety things in place where to prevent something like that. And apparently that wasn't the case for this. So. I was just like, wow, that's going to turn a, you know, Biden had the infrastructure bill, which I don't think has even gone into effect yet, but that's what that thing was supposed to take care of. A lot of highways and bridges and draw bridges and and all that kind of stuff. So now they got to refocus once they start implementing all this, they got to refocus after this kind of events. Like, all right, well, 
structures that don't have these new updates are the first that have to get done because what if this happened somewhere else that was even more populated than the Baltimore area? Now, that's a busy port for cruises and for, uh, you know, product coming in overseas. Well, there's an Amazon hub right in that that port that usually takes that bridge to ship out. So, yeah, there, right. there's there's going to be some long lasting effects. But say this was um, the Verrazano Bridge for New York, you know, mm-hmm. or uh, there's that big port that's down in Georgia that I can't, it's in Savannah or something like that. I can't think of it, but it's like, I think that's where they're, they're moving a lot of the overseas shipments too. Like we, I saw today that um, a good portion of it's going to start coming to Newark. Now they're clearing out a lot of stuff at the Newark ports, which are, are very busy uh, to start, there's all these ships that are sitting out there. They can't come in. And then there's a, there's like four or five ships in port that can't get out. Um, so they're dealing with all of that. If this happened with a bridge where there was more popular, uh, a bigger population or, or a bigger commerce, like up here in New York, New Jersey, or uh, the, the areas out in uh, California that brings in a lot of the stuff from the Pacific. And if you had to go through bridges to get to those ports and then this just closed everything. Yeah. It's pretty crippling. Yeah, I mean, this one particular port is, the I think, the 11th largest in the United States. Oh, yeah. Um, it's probably one of the busiest for, like, car imports and exports. Um, I mean, it, it is, again, it's going to be, it's going to halt a lot of things. And we were reading an article where the tunnels and the roads coming out of that port weren't built for big truck and shipping. So no. they've got to so really they can't even out. use the tunnels Mm-mm. for all of that unless... They allow certain times where they have to close the tunnel and then they open it. I don't know if it's like one lane this way, one lane this way, or if it's like certain bridge uh, tunnels where two lanes are next to each other. Right. They got to take down the dividers and let trucks just go through over both lanes to get in. Uh, I don't know how they do all this. This is for more um, uh, more educated people than I. Learned men. Le- yeah. More learned men. We have our top men working on this. Top men yeah i mean if you're looking at it the bridge itself you know had its just main two big pylons between the main structure of the bridge and you've got a boat ship excuse me ship that's like seven seven forty sevens long carrying as much cargo as it did Mm -hmm. i don't care where you hit it that thing's going down right and and it's it was ridiculously crazy how quickly it all happened because there was footage of the ship coming in it had a route, and then power goes out on the ship, which, of course, now the conspiracy nuts are saying, ooh, it was hacked. It wasn't hacked. Calm down. And, it, you know, it got power back up. You could see all the stuff. Yeah, see, people are just going nuts Jacob over in thing. the chat saying, uh, there's conspiracy people saying that it was a detonation. It wasn't a detonation. In fact, no. the um, the uh, the record, the maintenance record, inspection record for that boat showed that it crashed into a different harbor like not too so long ago, ago. Yeah. yeah and this boat has had different issues that why was uh, like chris is saying here it's like why was this even cleared to sail like that seems to be the more likely like this boat was malfunctioning and having issues all the time why was this cleared to go out more than a conspiracy thing where because the boat's registered to singapore and then yeah. some and people are saying oh well this is uh chi- this has china all over it oh my god no, I, I I don't see that. It's like people just want to latch onto this thing. It's it's just like Kate Middleton's cancer. Really, really? How are you drawing she, that conclusion? Well, yeah, they're they're also saying it was a diversity hire, and then or it was because of open borders. And I'm just sitting there going, like, you guys diversity really hire distra- the boat's not registered to the United States. Well, and the thing is, apparently, there's laws coming out of that port saying that the captain of that ship and whoever's running that ship just to get it out of the port has to be certified by um, the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. Plus they so also it wasn't have to have even local, the, sh- the captain. They have to have yeah. like local tugboats and stuff to guide them in and out, which is most ports have that. Like I see nah. when the cruise ships leave yeah. New York city or Bayonne and they're going through, um, uh, they're going through uh, the river to go to the Atlantic ocean. Even though those boats are, are self reliant they ha- when you're in port like that they have coast guard checks they have uh the fire boats like the, the mm-hmm. only time i ever usually see those is during like 
uh, like a parade. aquatic parades or Fourth of July where they're shooting the water out and all that stuff. Yeah, but they're too. always in the area. Coast Guard's in the area, and then you have the tugboats that are essentially steering these big ships into to the ports. Apparently, that wasn't a thing too. They didn't have the local boats uh, guiding this thing when this happened. It just seems like a lot of shit was. Uh, I don't want to say overlooked, but negligence. I think I mean, it is more than terrorism. Yeah. And well, I don't, the mayor of Baltimore came in and basically said, someone asked him like, you know, what happened with the he ship? He came What's right from on? football practice, by the way. That was weird. I, I saw, was like, who I is this his... kid they're talking to? And it's, it's oh, Axel this is Foley. the mayor. And he's wearing like his high school <laughs> letterman jacket. It was so it weird. Did. Looked like one of those, like, you know, uh, like the Axel Foley Detroit Lions jacket. Yeah. Um, Which Degrassi but, kid is this? But someone asked him, like, you know, what's the plans to rebuild the bridge? What's going on? You know, this. Um, he goes, look, th- right now the focus is, you know, recovery of people. Calm down. Like, and he handled it fine. Right. It, it, people immediately going to the next thing. You got to sit there and let time play out, figure out what happened and stop jumping to conclusions. Let it let it breathe a little bit. And then we figure it out. I mean, they're still doing cleanup. They're still trying to do rescue I mean, this is going to be a long process. And to sit here and keep speculating on what's going on, I, I you know, it's just, it's a waste of time. Uh, Chris in the I, chat is saying, apparently the freezers on board were popping a lot of the main breakers and they were working on the problem, but the ship should have never have been cleared to sail by somebody who cleared it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, I, I'm not going to know. And then, you know, I'll, I know what the news tells me. And then you get people like, oh, the news is lying to you all the time and whatever. At some point, you just got to like, uh, uh, that sounds plausible to me. And I'll just go with that. And I need to move on with my life. I don't need to sit here and and and, and uh, oh, dig deep on this particular topic. I just kind of want to know the gist of everything that's happening and, and where they're going with it. I always love how the Internet breeds a million bridge experts, a million <laughs> boat experts, a million shipping experts. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of experts out there. Yeah. Sitting in their, you know, basements. Yeah. See, Tom's back in the office. Usually there's supposed to be a local pilot uh, on board right. driving the ships in the harbor. All right. So maybe that's what I was hearing too. But I, I heard there were supposed to be like local boats, like the tugboats that just guide them uh, in and out of, of a harbor that has bridges and structures and things like that. They didn't have that either. Uh, yeah, terrible incident. Um, yeah. I will say this. I like disaster movies. It was kind of cool to look at from the helicopters thing. It's, it's such a terrible event, but seeing the wreckage, seeing part of the highway on the front of the boat just still intact, like laying on the boat. Uh, I was surprised a lot of the bridge had uh, curled. Yeah. Right? Like I get falling down and snapping in half, but for it to curl like that, it looked almost like... Remember uh, back in the day, as you're walking out of the supermarkets, they used to have the machines for recycling cans mm-hmm. and you used to put them in there and they would go through and you hear the crunch Crush and you see what they would compact to. That's kind of what it looked like. Like it bent so it easy, like aluminum. Itself. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. So seeing how a lot of it curled, how it, it crushed, and I go, that doesn't seem like it should have bent that way. Again, I'm now, not doing the, conspiracy. I don't know no. what how physics played into this particular scenario. But I was just looking at it, I'm like, that's weird because you see the video of the bridge falling and you expect to see giant chunks or smaller chunks somewhat intact the way that it fell. But then to see stuff curling like it hit like it hit metal and then bent. That it just that wasn't ready for the sense. weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> but I got to say the helicopter views Terrible event, but there's it tons cool. of views. Yeah, yeah, it looked um, kind of cool to see a disaster play out like that. I saw some footage of the residents of Baltimore being the residents of Baltimore, where they were blocking the roads off leading up to the bridge, and they were like, "No, that's okay," and would jump the median in their cars and still keep driving toward the bridge. And I'm like, you know, there's a blockade, right? Like, why are you think you're better than everybody else? It was crazy. Like, just. And it happened multiple times. Like, yeah. it wasn't just one idiot trying to, you know, no, people were just going around trucks that were blocking the area, jumping the median. One guy was running after one of the trucks saying, hey, look, the bridge is literally gone. It was just nuts. Like, I just couldn't believe it. So this is going to be Could you picture, a, like, during crazy. the day, it's like that scene in The Simpsons where they had that the Matlock hot Expressway that wasn't finished in Springfield, <laughs> and you just see cars flying over the edge. 
because they never finished the highway and they didn't bother to like put up signs around the bend that the the road was out. Right. Just imagine you you're, you're <laughs> breaking in again. National feeds are coming in like, oh my god, these people are just gunning it. They're thinking they're going to jump it. And you're just seeing cars fall, and it's and then at the bottom there's just a pile of cars because people are that dumb. They just keep they doing keep, it. Yeah, they keep going over. Um, noodles in the chat there. Uh, why didn't they just build? Uh, why don't they just build a tunnel instead of a bridge so nothing could run into it? Uh, they have one there. It's just not like we said earlier. It's not fit for that kind of heavy duty transport. It's meant as a passenger tunnel, not a not a not a cargo tunnel. Or if, if that's not even the right term. Shipping tunnel interstate commerce tunnel any kind of you know anything that involves a big truck it's not meant for right so uh i was wondering too because of spring break uh, not spring break spring training is over and baseball starting baltimore did they do a big i didn't see opening day for baltimore i don't know if they were home or not did they do a moment of silence did they do some kind of tribute thing are they going to wear a patch with the bridge on it like it's their 9-11 how are they handling this i don't know it's a good question because all things considered yeah terrible event but six people people really do like to capitalize on that stuff now yeah. that's what they're going to be looking looked for you know six oh, people died it's a Baltimore. miracle that it was only six people you know, again, if this was during any other time, there'd be hundreds of people and uh, probably dead um, and just a bigger disaster than than what this is. Six people. It's kind of yeah. a miracle for this thing. So how are they going to play all uh, play uh, play all this out? I want to go see. Chris is saying they should have oh, the Orioles bird wear a traffic cone. Hat. So dumb. <laughs> it's orange. It fits the costume scheme. It's true. It can work. Uh, Noodles saying they can't use the never forget slogan though because that's already taken but I can re- but I can't remember for what uh, yeah oh Baltimore here's a, here's an idea people Baltimore move your city's been terrible forever um, you're lucky you have a baseball team that has some kind of credible history your f- football team came from Cleveland and no one really cares <laughs> and uh, the only thing anybody really knows about Baltimore is that you like chipped beef crabs and and whatever the wire told you. So leave. Go ahead and leave. No one's going to blame you. Just section off the city and turn it into like Walking Dead. Which, by the way, that came out like two months ago. <laughs> I was going to say, nobody's no talked about it. it. Nobody's talked about that show. What was it called? The Those Who Lived? Those Who Lived. No one gave a fuck. Nothing, nothing on social yeah. media. The the uh, the cast, I haven't seen them show up. Um, usually I see the rundowns for who's going to be on late night talk shows and stuff. Nothing. Nobody cares. Frankie Bronson uh, spamming the chat to get noticed. So I'll give him this. Uh, Omar is here. Yes. What is Omar? At? No, Omar's dead. They killed Omar. He was on a bridge. He did. He was, well, he was on the bridge whistling Farmer in the Dell and then the bridge collapsed. Sheesh. I think it was Stringer Bell who took out the bridge because he owns those streets and he owns that bridge. All right, moving on. Ah, um, what else do we have going on here? Other disasters. Oh, hot air balloons was a big thing leading up to, <laughs> I was to the say, bridge nonsense here. So uh, in Australia, I don't know why people still do hot air balloons as a fun show. It's big here. I know they do it here too, but I just don't know why it's, antiquated transportation and it's pretty deadly like you can say the thing it's like oh planes crash yeah but the chances of dying in a plane crash are very slim right you mean you you mean adding fire uh, flammable uh materials and a wicker basket is not a safe activity for you eric that doesn't it wasn't even safe in the 1800s (laughs) when they were coming up with it or 17 whenever they came up with hot air balloons but alas, we have an incident with a hot air balloon thing in Australia. Hot air balloon took off from Melbourne's northern suburbs early in the morning and was in the air for about 30 minutes before a man fell from the basket. Now, you would think seatbelts or some kind of harness to keep you into said basket. Because if you're going to die, if the nothing. basket loses the balloon, there's nothing you can do. But you falling over the basket can kind of be helped. It can kind of be prevented. I mean, if Looney Tunes cartoons have taught me anything, you drop a couple of sandbags to go higher, and then uh, 
you know, and then there's ways to lower it. You add more sandbags and you go down. How do you add more sandbags if all your sandbags are gone? That's a good qu- That's I don't know. The cartoon uh-huh. never got to that point because usually yeah. the balloon crashed or sailed away at that point. So I don't Have know. Have you ever they- been in a balloon before? No, I've had the opportunity twice and I didn't do it. It is a pretty big um, activity here in Arizona because we got good weather. Right. You can usually get out there pretty early, especially during the summer and get some good sunrises and sunsets, things like that. I've had the opportunity to do it. I'm deathly afraid of heights. Like I'll go on roller coasters, but I can't, I don't like stepping on a tall ladder. Like it freaks me out. Right. I don't mind flying. I just hate the takeoff and landing portion. Hot air balloons terrify me. So I went in one and yeah, there's nothing strapping you in. You're literally in a basket. I was in there with like 10 other people. But it is very serene. Like, it was very calming. I was like, okay, this is not bad. However, I was white-knuckling the the structure of it. Like, I was holding onto the bars. Right. I would not let go until we were basket on the ground again. It is it is a very terrifying feeling just knowing that all I have to do is lean over and I can fall out like this gentleman here. Like, Hold it's on a second. Crazy. Backing up. Heather says, dude, everything I see on Twitter is talking about Rick and... Uh Michonne. Michonne on the zombie show. You're looking for it, is is it is. So you get into an algorithm where people who are talking about it are talking about it. I'm talking about, I follow a lot of mainstream stuff, surface level stuff. I'm not going to dig deep on that stuff because there are people, I'm sure, that love the show or talking about it. But I'm talking about as big as The Walking Dead was, no one's fucking talking about this new show. And I have a it's lot not. of like mixed people like on the Twitter, on Facebook and things like that. I I with you. I haven't really seen anybody talk about it either. No, there's not there's been no like mainstream level chatter uh, about this thing. And that show was huge. Now, there's shows that that fly under the radar that have successful fan bases people talk about, but you know, um TV publications, podcasting don't cover it. That happens cuz there's just so much content out there. But when do you have a property that was as big as The Walking Dead have a new thing and then nobody talks about it? The Walking, yeah. De- uh, not The Walking Dead, the uh, Lord of the Rings thing apparently was terrible, but people talked about it just to say how terrible it was because they saw it. Yeah. Uh, the spinoffs for um, uh, Dragons, um, why the House I- of the Dragons, the new one, the, yeah, House of Dragons, um, that was talked about a little bit. People said it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. And then I guess there's another season of it coming. Yeah, it's coming soon. That I've seen the announcement, um, but that kind of you know went to the wayside as well. There's been nothing good or bad about it. And that's worse than getting bad reviews for something, because at least people are talking about the property to get eyes on it, to check it out. Nobody's been talking about it. Nobody's been reviewing it. Fans may like it, but uh, as far as how big that show was, it's got nothing. I'll be curious to see what the ratings are doing because nobody's talking about it. Nobody's promoting it. All right. Yeah. Back to the balloons. Uh, so this guy in Australia fell to his death from a hot air balloon as it passed over uh, suburban Melbourne, Australia's second largest city, if you were not aware. The hot air balloon took off from the northern suburbs early in the morning and was in the air for about 30 minutes before the man fell from the basket. His body was found in a residential area that uh, Victoria State Police... Uh, closed off to traffic. He fell on a road somewhere, mm-hmm. like a busy highway. What if he fell yeah, like in he a school zone? Crashed through someone's house. Yeah, oh, he fell in the school TV. zone. He's right outside an elementary school, and the buses can't get oh. in. It's sort of like the the Baltimore Bridge. the <laughs> The cars can't get out of the parking lot. The buses can't get into the parking lot because there is a dead man in the crosswalk, and they can't move him because it's a crime scene. Uh, yeah, so the balloon landed safely many miles away from where the ba- man's body was found. Uh, the police said they would prepare a report for the coroner and that the death was not being treated as suspicious. They were also speaking with the pilot, uh, other occupants and witnesses. Uh, the National Commercial Hot Air Ballooning Industry and the Australian Ballooning Federation. Ooh, it's a federation. But mm-hmm. then they're going to get sued by some charity and have it to turn into the Australian ballooning entertainment Uh, expressed (laughs) condolences for the man's family and friends. Hot air balloon baskets are designed with safety in mind specifically to prevent passengers from falling out accidentally or any accidental exit didn't happen here. Passengers and the pilot are understandably traumatized by this tragedy and the operator is arranging psychological support and counseling for all who was affected. Um, Yeah. There's gotta be some kind of harness to strap you in or some kind of hook 
You know, like they have those, they have a, a, a building here and I know they do it in Vegas too. They have a building here where they strap you in. You're in a suit, mm-hmm. you have a, 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 a lock and a harness on you and you can walk out the side of a building with no structure, no railings, whatever. So you're walking essentially an unfinished part of the building with no railing, no anything. And you could just lean out over these stairs and look over Manhattan. And I know Vegas has that thing too, where you can walk out whatever attraction it is that they have same thing where you're strapped in and you can literally just lean over the edge and look over the city of las vegas they have that hot air balloons don't have that you should have some sort of seat belt harness child protection seat whatever and they don't but then again you're stupid enough to go into a balloon you get what you get <laughs> so dumb uh, there's another hot air balloon that happened uh, here in the in these United States in Minnesota a couple weeks ago. Three passengers were in a balloon uh, that I think hit a power line. This happens a lot. There are many clips online all around the world where you see balloons uh, losing control, losing altitude, and wind up hitting power grid structures and causing all kinds of awesome uh, sparks, colors in the sky, and a really chilling deathly sounding sound effect from hitting that um let me see if i can show you this here this is i guess like it's a highway cam this is footage of the balloon going in and hitting this power struck uh, these power lines right here on the side of the highway in minnesota do, 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 see it do, do. wow everyone's and dead just and the balloon still goes up well, it's got all that air and stuff like that. The basket separated. The basket fell, but the balloon just went. Uh, it went. It went flying like the bag in American Beauty. Huh. <laughs> but look at that! The well, second Wes Bentley's it, just sitting there staring at this balloon go by. Here's something else I'm finding interesting. Why was the fire so big? From where they it's were probably, putting this out, it's probably just dry land. You think that quick, it is? It's know, just a brush fire. That's what they're putting yeah. out. See, so basket power, falls down there. The power, yeah, the power. Uh, you saw the white lights right there where it hit. It drops down, and then I'll cut back here again. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that fire range right here. What's on there that's exploding like that? It's just dry, just dry uh, grass. Balloons, hot air and, balloons are what? Propane? Um, Is propane tanks that are uh, fueling it to to get the hot I air think, in the balloon? I don't think it's the propane or anything like that. I think um, I think it's just too dry. And then when that hit that spark, all those sparks hit it. I mean, that happens here in Arizona. That's why it's such a big deal during fire season, which is still a weird thing to say. We have fire season. Because you're Any too little dry, spark dry. Hit- hush, hush. I know why. <laughs> but yes, we're very dry, dry. A uh, hot air balloon um, hit, hit a power line along a highway in Rochester, Minnesota. Sparked uh, a brush fire. There we go helps to read the article first uh nearby rochester police said they responded to reports about a hot air balloon accident on the on highway 63 between oh, who cares about the local stuff uh while the balloon was trying to land in the field a gust of wind pushed it into a nearby power line causing the basket to disconnect from the balloon fall 20 to 30 feet to the ground now that's not that bad a fall 30 feet still sucks to fall you may break an arm or like an ankle or something but you're going to survive you're talking jumping off the roof of like a three-story building that It'll, still sucks yeah, yeah you'll survive sucks, but, you'll survive it uh but the, when the power pl- uh, the power line comes into play you're done Sparks flew from the power line, prompting a small brush fire next to where the basket landed, according to the police. Three passengers were in the balloon at the time, two of whom uh, report. Oh, my God. People lived. I thought they all died. Two, two, uh, sorry. Three passengers were in the balloon at the time, two of whom very minor injuries reported. What happened to the third guy then? That they're not saying. The balloon was found a couple miles away after it's seen drifting southeast without its basket. Uh, again, the Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation uh, Safety Board are investigating. Now, listen to the you have the FAA and the National Transfer, uh, Transportation Safety Board mm-hmm. talking, uh, going in and investigating what happened here with this balloon. The Australian one had like the not the, like the um, the hobby society of it. <laughs> 
going to look. The Outback Balloon The National Society. Commerce Hot Air Ballooning Industry, along with the Australian Ballooning Federation. That just sounds like, well, the carnival, the local carnival, and then the local <laughs> Knights of Columbia, uh, Columbia enthusiasts got together to do the investigation. In America, it's federal agents coming in to look at why this balloon hit a power line. Australia, 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 we love you. All right. Uh, and then I want to f- follow up, uh, finish up the week in disasters. This story you brought to me. I didn't see this one. Can you explain this one to me? All right. Let me open this up. So the other day, <laughs> so employees of an Amtrak station in California were laying down concrete um, this last Friday when they saw something kind of crazy. Um, they saw a homeless man with a detached leg that had believed to come from a person who was hit by a train near the railway station earlier that morning. This man was waving the detached leg around before hitting it against the wall and apparently taking bites out of it. So he was holding this leg like it was a drumstick. Now, if this happened in (laughs) those who lived for Walking Dead, everybody would be talking about this. Yes, so, yeah, so we had, I'm assuming, a, a train accident that w- apparently wasn't very big, but someone's leg got detached and the homeless man, you know, feeling the need, being a little peckish that day, grabbed this leg and started uh, hitting it against the walls and um, <laughs> and taking bites out of it. Um, I have the news Jose clip Ibarra, here. Do we want to look at the news clip? Yeah, do run the news clip if you want to do it. Okay. Uh, let's bring that up here. Here we go. He's eating it. Hey, what the fuck are Can't hear it. You are looking Can't at... Can't hear it? No. Oh, huh, okay. Hold on a second. Let me figure out why that happened there. Apologies. I must have hit the wrong setting on this thing here. Like that. There we go. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. I know radio was hearing it, but the, the TV wasn't. He's eating it. Hey, what the fuck are you are looking at what a witness says is a man eating a detached leg. The detached <laughs> leg came from a, what a weird person sentence hit to by have a to train say. near the Wasco Amtrak station earlier that morning. Well, on the leg, the skin was hanging. You could see the bone. Jose Ibarra tells Eyewitness News that when the man walked past him with the leg, he believed him to be homeless. Ibarra is unsure where the man came from. Now, hold on. There's a bigger story here at play, but what if it turns out that the homeless guy sues the construction guy for assuming he was homeless for some slander and, and uh, his libel misappropriation, libel yeah, and all of that stuff, and it's and, and just yellow journalism. You're just labeling people, and you're being insens- insensitive to this man's right. plight. My pronouns are not homeless. Yeah. Um, the bigger story here is uh, whose leg is it? Well, let's see. He they, says Kern County Sheriff's deputies say. stopped the man after people from the Amtrak station called the police. More videos sent into eyewitness. I like how he's walking and he's swinging it around like a cane, around. like Casey Don the Magic Wand. The man is 27 year old Rosendo Tellez. Tellez was arrested for taking evidence from the scene and had multiple outstanding warrants. Now, wait a minute. Couldn't it have been applied that it's like finders, keepers, losers, weepers? You know, I found it. (laughs) Possession is nine tenths of the law. It's just trash. I took it. It's a crime scene. It wasn't a crime scene when I found it. It was a leg laying here on the sidewalk. It's open to anybody. So basically, um, the police force um, got him for outstanding warrants. Investigation is ongoing. The force hasn't confirmed who the leg belongs to or who was hurt in the train crash, but it's right. reported that one person was killed. So if that person that was killed has both legs, I think that rules out that guy as the guy missing the leg. Correct. So you can't... Which means you can't where's char- the one-legged man? You can't charge him for stealing a leg from an alleged crime scene when it had nothing to do with the crime scene. Right. So and then the other now it's like no whose leg is it? Like, well now that we have a bigger problem. We got to find out whose leg that is again. Finders keepers nine tenths of the law of, right. of possession. I found it on a public setting. It's mine. Until we go through the court process, I'm not giving you the leg. 
So right now, and, th- and, th- and this is speaking to our audience, we have two mysteries we have to solve here. We have to solve whose leg this is, right? And who took the radio tower in Alabama? That has still not been solved. So these are two big major stories we got to figure out. Did you see? Uh, did we ever do a follow up that iHeart offered to buy a new radio tower for that? Did they? Yeah, they offered to uh, help support the funding to buy a new tower for that radio station. Because I guess other stations were trying to lend them signal space and Mm -hmm. the FCC wasn't allowing it. Right. So uh, I guess iHeart, along with uh, a couple other organizations, got together and were buying a new tower for this radio station that had their stolen. We do need to do a follow-up. Please write that down if you could. I've been looking into it. I check it every now and then. And we still haven't got an answer who took it. Nobody knows where it's at. If you had the the tower and needed to dump it, there's a river in Baltimore right now. You could just throw it in. No one's going to question. They're just all going to think it's part like of a bridge that fell apart. Stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Well, yeah. Po- so someone's missing a leg and this man was eating it. Such a weird story. Like, I just couldn't believe. A, we have a train accident, which is, you know, something we always try to you know talk about. Right. But we have a man eating a leg and nobody knows whose leg it is. Nobody. What the hell? I like the fact so, that if he was walking around and, and twirling it like around. a cane, like a pimp cane. <laughs> he's putting just, on the Ritz. He's putting on the Ritz. Have you seen But the he's homeless, le- so it's put on the Ritz. <laughs> Have you seen that leg to do up and down Park Avenue? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, we got to get into Leon Redbone. I got to talk about oh, man, that. What a, what a night. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, that's it for this week in disasters here. You know what? Let's just play the intro again and then we'll move on. Oh, I see in the chat there. Iraq with the $2 donation for the Iraq army. I do not have any official form of military body, both for me to enlist or for me to govern, but that was uh, $2 that will go to Jordan. So thank you for doing that. Look at that, Jordan. It's it's paying off in spades for you. Um, I want to talk to you about something really dumb. So... Earlier in this week, I don't remember how we came across it, but we started talking about the artist Leon Redbone. If you're not familiar with him, um, let me pull up some of his work for you because we're going to go pretty uh, pretty nonsensical <laughs> with all of this. I believe you were, we were talking about, you sent me the, oh, that's how it came up. So you sent me the clip. Of Mr. Belvedere and Wesley's friend. Wesley's friend with AIDS, yeah. And then we started talking about the theme song, and then we remembered it was Leon Redbone, and then that turned into an hour of us, like literally an hour of that. Okay, now I got to... So that was the impetus. I didn't bring that clip in. I'll get it real quick. So yes, that was the that's how that started because we were talking about Wesley's friend. Yeah, it's just so weird how... such an odd clip. I mean, AIDS... Not that AIDS isn't a big deal, but it's not as big as a deal as it was in the 80s, uh, 70s, 80s when it came out because it was considered a death sentence. Like there was right. nothing anybody could do to help you. Now they have, um, you There's see all over cable news, you have all those different preps, uh, medications and regimens mm-hmm. that you can take to uh, help. It's a lot more manageable. Suppress your, if you are HIV positive, to help suppress it. And then there's other things you can take and do to uh, help reduce your chances of contracting it. So uh, we've come a long way as far as where that thing was so uh, polarizing that everybody was just like, oh my God, you, you, you got AIDS, that means you're dead. And then like your family and friends and everybody else just stopped talking to you like you're a leper, you know, and would abandon you. Uh, there was an episode of Mr. Belvedere <laughs> where one of uh, Wesley's friends comes over and this is just the way the episode was going to introduce the fact that the kid had AIDS or they were going to talk about AIDS uh, being a big deal as the the subject of this episode. Yeah. How they did it. <laughs> it's so just, The it's so execution weird. of it is fa- for me. It's fantastic because oh, that it. if we were coming up with our way to introduce it, this would probably be the way we did it for sure. Like the way we would write it come up with the concept, the introduction, if you will. 
not thinking that anybody would take it seriously because we're obviously joking on the presentation of of very difficult material to discuss at the time. They did it. They did it in probably the most hilarious and inappropriate way to introduce the subject. One, it's so flippant. Like, AIDS just, in the eighties was a huge deal, like we said. Oh, it was huge. Two, like, a child. Point. Wasn't Ryan White like the huge, huge story in the eighties where that kid right. contracted from blood in, uh, transfusion? A blood so, tra- like, uh, yeah, transfusion. Yeah, like oh, it's just not gays that are getting it now. Anybody can get it, and that's what right. really made it. So top the of way mind. they're like, this kid has it now. Uh, all right, so I'm going to show you this. Let's let's check this out. All right. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Belvedere. Hello, Danny. Is Wesley here? Yes, come on in. Everyone, you remember Wesley's friend, Danny? Oh, hi, Danny. Hi, Mrs. Owens, Mr. Owens. Hiya, champ. How's it going? Well, I got AIDS, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. (laughs) Hey, other than AIDS. All right, I want to show you something. The girl who plays the daughter is, I guess this is like the seventh take they've done or, or a couple takes. Probably, yeah. Because she's trying not to laugh. She's laughing in the she back, and she coming. quickly, when she realizes the camera shots on her, she tries to cover it up. Friend, Danny. But she's in the background oh. here. All right, see her here, right? She's just like uh, she's got I her can't. hand over her mouth, but watch. Hi, Danny. Look, she's smiling. She she's knows right. what's happening, Zones. and then she quickly goes like that because she's trying not to laugh because she knows the line that's coming, which is also. Hilarious that she's laughing at the AIDS joke and they're like, this is supposed to be serious. This is a very special Mr. Belvedere that you have to worry about. But See, this uh, is this is just this is just how things are full circle talking about, you know, baseball's opening day. We have a uh, baseball legend, Bob Uecker in Mr. Belvedere. All right. That's a bit of a stretch, but OK, <laughs> I get what you're what you're doing. Yeah, with it. See, there you go. It's all baseball. Really. All right. Um, I got AIDS. But other than that, I'm great. Other than that, I'm I'm peachy keen, <laughs> Jelly Bean. Everything's great. Let's hang out. Where's Wesley at? All right. So yeah, so we were That's we were, ta- we we were laughing about the AIDS episode of Mr. Belvedere, and then we go into the theme song because the theme song is one of the best theme songs ever written for a television show. Even though it has nothing, catchy. it really has nothing to do with the television show, right? right. But. It's in, it's great because it it's well made, and then wound up leading us to a, a, a deep dive on Leon Redbone, who's the guy who sings the theme song f- for Mr. Speaks Belvedere. All China. Yeah, but Never he he was just pool. this very unique um, musician who played yeah. and sang for a time that was like a hundred years prior. Like that music that he does, that he was, he was well acclaimed. Like he was on the Tonight Show all the time with Johnny Carson. Uh, in the eighties, he had all kinds of um, ad endorsements he was doing for major mm-hmm. corporations. We'll get to those in a second. Budweiser, Kodak, uh, all. Um, I don't think all's around anymore, but it was a laundry detergent, um, a bunch of de- uh, car companies, whole bunch of stuff. But he has this unique way of singing. The unique way of speaking and i'll tell you what it reminds me of it reminds me of the butter song that we always quote from south park i got something in my pocket for you i got something in my pocket and i don't know know what it is i do it all the time let me see if i have that i got something in my pocket for you i thought i did Taco, taco flavored kisses trapper keeper yeah, something in your pocket. Is nice. I don't. All right, I'll have to make a note. Because he didn't want to perform anymore. I thought I had that in there. But when you well, hear yeah, that, it it's an like earworm it. because you'll walk around later and then all of a sudden you, you're still singing it. And in that for, cadence. Yeah, because we were doing this late Tuesday night and I'm still doing it and it's Thursday and I'm still going to keep because I kept going, tricks on the try and it was just it just keep, it stuck in sticks in your head. And then right when we were doing show prep tonight, I thought I'd gotten it out. And then you were like, da, 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 da. I'm just like, damn, right back into it. And right I kept back doing into like it again. Stay and lift, or that's all. all right. Like just so crazy. It reminds me of like old 20s style, you know, jazzy, you know, bra, da, 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 da. real quick. Like something like that. Ira, 
didn't he's talking about Jim Norton. Uh, right. Didn't Jimmy say he was on the HIV drug when he was on Joe Rogan? I didn't see his last appearance. I I meant to. I have it. Bo- I have. There's like so many different Joe Rogan episodes. I meant to go watch, but they're all like right. three hours each. So sometimes I don't have time to do it. Um, I have no idea if he did or not. But um, I will go listen to it and see if that was the case. Was not aware. All right. Anyway, Leon Redbone, Mr. Belvedere theme, one of the best ever made. Here it is. Can't hear. Strix really? You can't hear it? I'll just sing it. Tricks on the China. No, 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 no. Never happened before. It's set to. I don't know why it blocked out on that. Hold on. When you drop, kick your jacket. As it <laughs> fell through the door, no one glared. No one glared. Sometimes things get <laughs> kind of rough. remember that. Though, like... No one spared. Oh, I'm going to sing along with it now. Uh, this yeah, is what you do. do. Okay, let's try this again here. See if this works. You hear it? I always remember the piano, yes. China, never met him before. Who cares? When you drop kick your jacket, as you come through the door, no one's there. No declares. Sometimes things get turned around. No one's there. All hands look out below. There's a change in the status quo. I always hate it. All the help that you can get According to our new arrival <laughs> Life is more than mere survival But just right live a good life yeah. Fantastic Now do you remember like You remember when shows like this It was usually like it was usually like, okay, first episode, pilot episode had a longer version of the song, and then they shortened it down, but then every now and then when they needed to fill time that they didn't film enough, you always get the long version. There's a long version of this song. No, that- there's a long version instrumental for the extended, for the credits, when they showed the entire credits if the episode went short. I looked. I didn't see a longer version. The chips and the soda make a night in the den so sweet. Like There is a legit longer version of this song that's been performed. Or it those is, are the actual lines for it? Yeah, that's the next verse. <laughs> when you long haul a tractor and then the bridge <laughs> falls in the drink. Because <laughs> this is what we were doing the other night. Like, those are legit lyrics. But then we were starting to make up lyrics using Leon Redbone's l- v- vocals. We were just doing it as do other stuff. songs. Yeah, we're going to get into it. Now I want to know if there's a, an extended. We'll try to. I'll, I'll I'm see looking. I'm looking. It. Hold on here. There's an extended Mr. Belvedere. Oh, you know what? Hold on. No, there's this this one episode has the the different video packages for each season, but mm. the music's the same. Oh wait, original pilot intro. See, every show always had the original song. Like Scrubs had an original longer version of their Superman song. Um, yeah, because he made the guy made it a full song before they cut it down for the show. That's the difference. But see, sometimes they have that full song at the beginning when they start like a pilot or even like the first couple, like a season maybe. I found it. (laughs) Oh, that's definitely not me on that phone. When you drop a kick to deck it. I don't hate this. No. Very gruff. I like the other one better. I like it. They're, they're not doing the other lyrics, though. But it's a different singer. Yeah. Yeah, I Ooh. like that one. That's crazy. Let me see if uh, it doesn't tell me who the theme is. I like that kind of big Mardi Gras style band uh, yeah. music with it. I'm looking through That's here. Music fun. arranged by theme. Mr. Belvedere. Words, but Wow. Do you know who wrote and create the Mr. Belvedere theme song? No. Judy Hart Angelo and Gary Portnoy. You know who they are? Huh. They wrote um, the Cheers theme song. They did okay. Frasier. They did a whole bunch of other. Like, they're very well known. 
Okay. If it wasn't Alan Thicke doing the other theme songs of the right. 80s, it was these two. See, I remember way too many like 80s themes. Like we were just talking that Perfect Strangers is 37 years old and I could do that entire theme song. I haven't seen that show in probably more than a decade. Standing tall on the wings of, of our of dreams, our dreams. <laughs> rise and fall. I, yeah, I can't find the extended Mr. Belvedere thing. I'll see if I can find it. I'm looking here. Anyway, Leon. <laughs> The deep well of uh, stuff. While I'm looking, uh, bring up the the Budweiser commercial because I had no idea he did this. Okay, yeah, I'll bring that up. Because that is a now I'm obsessed with finding dream. the other ver. Uh, uh, so now I know that. that there is more a, a a an alternate version, the original pilot version, which I I do enjoy. I like Leon's version better, but I do right. enjoy that one. And now I want to hear the extended version of it too. I'll, I'll find it. It's like I don't know if you knew had this experience in the 90s when friends hit right one morning i have the radio on and they just decided to play the full length version of the friends theme throws you off and you're here yeah you're hearing it's like dun, 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 you hear the guitar dun, 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 dun. i'm like uh, that sounds Again, a little weird I, and then theory- they do the theme and then there's the, all the extra parts of the song and then they reveal that oh just dropped from the rembrandt it's the full version of the friends theme i'll be there for you and you're like it's a whole fucking song. It, like, I don't think my, you get that experience now, finding no. that out, because my TV themes is, are not really a thing anymore. Well, my theory is is that those are usually episodes that maybe they didn't film a full, because there are Simpsons episodes that have longer versions of stuff, and they it's because they ran out, they didn't film enough. Like, they had a shorter episode, so you, you know, throw in an extra 30 seconds at the beginning on a theme song, and now you, you know, 30 seconds left. You're a dork, Aaron. That's funny, but you're just dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see what else we we haven't looked at the chat in a bit. The Star Spangled Banner has another verse. Yeah, that that was another thing with the bridge Isn't falling. That crazy? Everyone's talking about you know the disaster, the structure, what's the potential cleanup, who else is missing, those kind of things. The Washington Post put out yesterday morning, um, uh, you know, for the all the news feeds to hit. It's like what you don't know about Francis Scott Key and you know how the sta- the national anthem is based in racism and the other words from his poem and all that stuff. I go, really? This is what you're going to try to to glom in right now? When right? this is a day old that this bridge just collapsed? It's a considered a massive tragedy, even though very little loss of life, a uh, little loss of life. Um, and then you're like, well, do you know it's named after a race? It's like go fuck yourself. This is not the time to be pulling this shit in there. Newsflash, the majority of things in this country are named after people that are probably despicable, racist, terrible, whatever. It's just how history is. Stop. I'm not defending the guy. I haven't even read the entire poem. But if... Look, I even think the Star Spangled Banner is shit. It should be America the Beautiful. I think that's a better song than the Star Spangled Banner. But whatever. Whatever. All right. Back to... uh, more fun stuff here mr leon redbone uh we wanted to do which one i'm sorry do the budweiser one because that is a wild video it, all right so this is this is shot like a music video and Weird. it's almost like a fever dream where is the budweiser one? Oh, there it is oh, hold on a second okay i got it yeah because i pulled these uh i wasn't trusting online so i pulled them so that we had them so it's got to go through something different here. All right. So this is from 1982. He had a, uh, I think, like a two-year campaign deal with Budweiser where he was doing Budweiser commercials. This essentially was, uh, it was shot, I, yeah, it was shot almost like a mini film production. Like there's a budget for this. There's different camera angles. There's different things where he's like floating on a ska- uh, surfboard. Like there's a lot of production work. That <laughs> there's went- weird stuff going on with this thing. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, take a look at here. Leon Redbones, this bud's for you. This bud's for you. For being on what? the job and working hard all day. So kind of production you-, you can't hear it? No. Why does this keep turning off? 
Look, you, you do one interview in the Great Britain, and all of a sudden, you just don't care oh, about us. I, just, I wish I had a producer. The American people. All right. I'll try it again here. This does for you for being on the job and working hard all day. Almost like Peter Sellers. There's no one Look, he's floating on a, a surfboard with a beer. Like, there's no reason for that. There's a midget playing tug of war with muscle guys. There's a giant Budweiser in the middle of the, the moon. Yeah, I want to pull this back a little bit. Look at this right here. All right, so see how he swoops down? There's like 1960s style bikini babes here, like an, like an Annette Funicello lookalike. Yeah. Right? Muscle bound, blonde, tan guys. There's a midget playing tug of war and he's hanging <laughs> on the rope because he can't touch the ground and they're just, just they're pulling him all over no, the place. Look, no he sw swoops down in and out. Just, and then he's out. And then the muscle guy just grabs the bikini girl by the ass and palms her butt and pulls her out, out of there like they're running away like it's like it's starting to rain like he's trying to get her to shelter <laughs> for all you do all you do is love you just floating in like what is this yeah I'm it doesn't back. make any sense it doesn't here's the space scene again but just look at him he's it's bad green screen but look He's like floating through space, like he's tripping out. I also love that it's the uh, pull, uh, the pull tops, the yeah. can, the way the can shaped. There's blood for you because your parents aren't home, and that's all they had in the fridge. <laughs> this blood's for you. Yeah, it's just a, uh, it's such a weird, it's it's just such a weird commercial to sell beer. I love it. It's We've great. talked about this in the past. I think a lot of these commercials should go back to a lot of the styles of the 70s Vintage and 80s because yeah. they were like mini episodes of something. Like there was continuity. The the um, the Miller Lite commercials with John Madden and Rodney Dangerfield where yeah, it was, those they, were good. they were at a sports bar or they were playing softball or they were doing something and it was all different characters from television shows and professional athletes. All involved doing corny one-liners, uh, you know, as insults against each other, and then it would break down. We liked Miller Lite because it tastes great. Oh, and, and it's, it's less filling. filling. And then it would start the whole thing. But it was always sort of the same rogues gallery in each commercial they were doing. And sometimes they had updates, like you'd you'd see uh, Bob Uecker would be in there for something, and then right. you know, it 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 there was like an art to doing all of this stuff. Oh, here's one that I still I still remember. Remember Joey Suzu? Joey Suzu. Yeah, he was what the I neighbor lie. on Empty Nest. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um uh Jim J Bullock. Wasn't it? From No, that wasn't Jim J Bullock. It was somebody else. No, Jim J Bullock was on he Too was Close for on... Comfort, which was right, the and... the guy uh Ted Knight from um That's right. Mary Tyler Moore. I'm trying to think of his real name. He uh he was the father of two daughters and JJ uh JJ Jim J Bullock was the questionable Jack Tripper ripoff. Yes. You know, like you didn't know he was gay or not in the show. And he'd go, What are you doing, Monroe? Don't you delay a hand on my daughter? And like that. It was always something dumb that. like that. Uh but no, Joe Azuzu David Leisure. Yeah. Heather. Yeah, David Leisure. Joe Azuzu was the Joe Azuzu guy. Then he got cast as the neighbor. Yeah. Now on Empty Nest. Here's a little deep dive for you. The neighbor on Empty Nest, he was a pilot. Quagmire is based on Family Guy, is based on the neighbor in Empty Nest, Joe Azuzu. Right. So, because Joe Azuzu always had, you know, uh, different stewardesses or broads or whatever he was good, you know, because he was in town or at a hotel. He always had outrageous stories and, and what have you. That's what Quagmire is based on, was on uh, David Leisure's character in Empty Nest. And Empty Nest was a spinoff of The Golden Girls. Correct. It was because he was one of their doctors for a while, mm -hmm. and then that was no longer the case because the one of them Girl died. Universe. Who died? I'll leave it to you to go binge watch and find out. Um, so yeah, he also had other commercials too. Beside this is the one I knew him for the most, maybe just because I was a kid. Um, yeah. He used to do the commercials for laundry detergent, a company called All, which I don't it's think still it, around. It is. It's still it around. Is. Yes. Oh, because the because you had lifter. to like, because you said I don't know if it's still around. I'm like, 
I feel like I've seen it recently. I had to look it up. <laughs> yeah, it's still around. Anytime I'm in the store, if I remember about laundry detergent, it's usually I just see like half the aisles all tied. Or uh, yeah, um, tight's big. That uh, what the hell is Arm and Hammer's getting a lot of those run. floral bottles that they use to pour into your dryer sheets. Right. And in place of your dryer sheets, it's the liquid that you put in fabric softener. Downy, snuggle, snuggle, downy. Yeah, I think down. I think it's the same company. Actually. The quicker snuggle picker. The no, that's Bounty. Um, all right, so this is uh, Leon Redbone doing um, all laundry detergent. My favorite jeans, I wear them so I remember much. this one. They're hard to keep clean. Every time stains on my favorite jeans fall. My mama lifts them out with L L L That's all. That's all. The stain lifter, that's all. Boo, 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 boo. Leon Redbone it's- is like a, a hybrid of Dean Martin doing um Oh crap, why am I Bing Crosby. Yeah. Like he's somewhere in between those two. You know, having him. We were also trying to figure out modern songs that he could do. Because I love his that voice. That he could redo. I love oh, yeah. how he performs. Uh, let me say this. Let me get to. Uh, this is one of the times he was performing on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. <laughs> just, I like this one. He's in a he's tuxedo wearing a, wearing a Mexican sombrero. Yeah. I was do, I was seeing that the rest of that night. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fairy face. I'm gonna look at the gym soon. Fairly yeah. Doc Severinsen and the and the Tonight Show Orchestra was also like that. They could back up anybody. And the Roots do it now. The Roots are fantastic on Jimmy yeah. Fallon. They play with everybody and they're it's like who doesn't want to see the Roots play with Dave Grohl? You know? I love when we were watching this the other night, the thing that stands out to me is like, oh Doc Severinsen, oh look, it's Leon Redbone wearing a sombrero. I like the the Bond villain with the eye patch playing a tuba in the back. <laughs> like oh, what yeah. the hell's going with that? If they brought a guest like this on late night, I'd be, wa- I mean, you obviously watch it on YouTube, but I'd watch yeah. this clip. Well, when I saw my movie the other night, I, I, that's what I told you. I was like, they need to make like an old 70s style, like, variety show like this again. Like, yeah. do a Tonight Show, but set it in the 70s. You got your newer actors coming out, dress the part. Everyone's wearing polyester. The sets are like orange and brown. Like, just do something fun. Right. Even though it's now. Heather in the chat, the roots have always been top tier. Agreed. Oh, their, for sure. their music stuff, their their solo band music stuff is fantastic. But they've also just blown through the stratosphere once they got onto late night with Jimmy Fallon and now the Tonight Show. Everybody wants to play with them. Uh, there was a, a, a Oscar performance, Eminem. He was nominated for Lose Yourself when 8 Mile mm-hmm. came out. And I think he won. I think he won uh, for that the song. The Oscar for you know, Lose Yourself? Yeah, he did. So when he went to pe- perform it at the Oscars, he had the roots playing the background for him when he went out there to perform. And then... Towards the end of the performance, they changed up the music to, I think it was, uh, might have been Rockbox by Run DMC. So they switched the music. He's still doing Lose Yourself, but they switched the music up. And you're just going like, holy shit. The Roots just can do everything. Yeah. And then the, the other bit they do, too, where they play popular songs with artists with children's instruments. With children's toys. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon's a dummy and... You know he's annoying, but I think he they elevate his show. I think a little bit more. Remains. Totally. I, I mean, they they fall in again. They fall in that late night history. Every musician wanted to play with Doc Sever- Severson and his orchestra. Mm-hmm. Every musician wanted to play with Paul Schaefer's band from Letterman. You know, mm-hmm. no one gave a shit about Leno's band. It's like, oh, you're playing with it. So even to a lesser extent, but it was still in the same realm. Conan's band 
with yep. or without Mark uh, Max Weinstein in there when it was J- Jimmy Iovine mm-hmm. leading the band. Artists wanted to play with him. Like El- uh, I remember one time Dice was on Conan. And he liked those guys. He went over there and he's like, I want to do Elvis. Can you do C.C. Ryder? And Conan's band's playing C.C. Ryder and there's <laughs> Dice doing Elvis, doing a full... Pro- That's when, you you know, that there's times where they're, they're very under-recognized, but a good band for a late night talk show actually makes the show. If you don't have the right band for it, your show's not going to do well no matter how well the, the host or the, or the guests are. It's right. when you have those musical performances or those specialty bits and you have a band that's so versatile to do all of that stuff. Yeah, you got to be able to pull it off. All right. We get it. You like the roots. We get it. Um, <laughs> so it's like, what song were you playing there? Here, I have this for you. Hey, Simpson, what are you trying to play? Polly Wally Doodle. Oh, yeah? Well, it sounds Polly Wally crappy. Ha <laughs> ha! Burn! <laughs> Burn. <laughs> when he was doing that song, like I was like, all I was thinking of was like, <laughs> it was like Polly Wally crappy. Polly Wally doodle 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 doodle. I would love to have, if he was still alive, I think he died. I think he's passed, yeah. Um, when did he die? 17, 19, 20, 17, 27, 19, somewhere in there he died. But I would love to hear an album where I would just fund yeah, 2019. his album to have him do cover songs of popular hits. And that's it. Like he can do all his his old ragtime stuff and and uh, big band things and all that. But then the next, like a two disc album, the second disc yeah. would have to be he has to do cover songs of popular songs. I mean, he even did the uh, "Baby It's Cold Outside" with Zoe Deschanel from the Elf soundtrack. Like he just does yeah. everything. Yeah. Really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. Well, he doesn't say that part. I know, but I'm doing it. As Leon Redbone. <laughs> Leon Redbone with <laughs> Leon Redbone singing. Leon Squared. It's a new album we're putting out. Just me and Eric being Leon Redbone singing popular songs. That's all the same left and that's all. It's like, wait, he doesn't do Damn the boom, boom, boom. That's Bing Crosby's nonsense. Yeah. What popular songs could he do? And maybe I see you in a movie sneak yeah. preview. Doing like Blink 182. Did you hear he fucked her? That's just how it does. It's like Will Ferrell doing um, uh, Robert Goulet on Saturday Night Live. Robert Goulet. Bada beep, bop, 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 thong song. <laughs> Bring what I do. Backs like a truck, truck, truck. People are like what, 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 what? Baby, ba do, ba da, thong song. <laughs> Just so done. Good. That would be so funny. Uh, I keep trying to think of other songs. Now. I don't know why I'm defaulting Leon Redbone to doing Blink One Eighty Two. Although that would it would be fantastic. <laughs> it would be great. Uh, I'm trying to think what other. There's got to be something else that he would be perfect for. It'd just be perfect for everything. Dig deep, Eric. I'm, I'm thinking you're not helping either. I can't be doing all of it. I like watching you fumble. It's not fumble. It's just there's so many because I'm I'm like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, NWA is running through my mind. I'm trying to think. Katy Perry is there a Katy Perry song that he can do? Well, you're hot and you're cold. You're yes and you're no. You're in and you're round. You're up and you're down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's baby, how it goes. you're a firework. Yeah, I signed a blank check, babe. No, was it? I got a blank check, baby, and I'll write your name. But boom, 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 boom. Yeah, because you're <laughs> everything to me. Or you go look in the house. Eyes, I... The house. Wait, what, you can do better than Ezra. You can do good. I'm spacing on living. Wait, it's everything to me when I. Close my eyes. It's, it's you, you that I see. see. Yeah. I miss him. That would be fun. I wish I was more appreciative of him when he was alive and, and I had to figure all this out now. Yeah. I have that happen a lot where there's things I've grown over the years, really big appreciations for people, their work, their writings, their movies, their music, all of that stuff. And then you go, damn, they died like 20 years ago, and I couldn't have enjoyed it while they were here. You know, I just mm-hmm. wasn't thinking of that stuff at the time. But it's also part of the fun of, of getting older when you something clicks and you just go on a bit of a deep dive and you go, wow, I really I, appreciate this now. I understand this. 
Well, it also comes, it's weird that when you have kids, how you want to start passing things on and right. you start realizing you maybe appreciate things a lot more as you grew up. So you're introducing them to the kid or the kids and stuff like that. So it, it's a lot of, uh, it, it's fun to go down those nostalgic deep dives because then you start discovering things you didn't realize that particular artist did. Like I knew yeah. of, you know, you know, the stain lifter, that's all and all this stuff. And, but you and I didn't realize he did the elf soundtrack. You know, he, he, he does, he did a lot more than what we were, um, giving him credit for. So it's nice to see the things like you were telling me stories, how he would be on these shows and he would be, doing this bit where he starts singing a song and then he looks over to like Johnny Carson to like give him forgot the, the lyrics. lyrics. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Hey, what? what? And you know then, what? you know, Johnny's like throwing lyrics out to him. And Johnny was that kind of a host that would play with that bit. Johnny and would he love, knew it was a good bit. Johnny loved comedians. So he would, he's like, well, do what you want to do. If you want me to be a part, like, yeah, we always said that the Rodney Dangerfield appearances, if you go back and look at any Rodney Dangerfield appearance on, on Johnny Carson, he would pro he probably behind the scenes like so. What do you want me to set you off with? And Rodney goes, oh, uh, you know, maybe uh, ask me about this. And then Johnny goes, okay, and then sits back. Like Johnny knows he doesn't. This is something Fallon doesn't understand. Right. It's his show, yes, but it's your show all of the time. It's not. It doesn't need to be your show every time you have a guest on. It could be their show while the guest is there. Right. Get, let them be have that vehicle to shine. Right. So if you want to sit back and just let them go, let them go. Don't bring yourself into the moment with it. There's a clip mm -hmm. that he that he had Dwayne The Rock Johnson on and he was promoting Moana at the time. And he convinced The Rock to do parts of his song You're Welcome, which is a big song for Moana. And he starts doing the whole thing and then he you know the roots are then come in and they're playing as Dwayne's doing the part. And there's a part that goes, hey, 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 hey. And that's the big kickoff. Don't need to say it's a, okay. You're welcome. Goes into mm -hmm. the chorus. So while he's hitting the hey part, the, the roots are going full into the song. Dwayne's uh, singing it. Fallon picks up a microphone, comes over, and now he's duetting with him. Yeah. It's like, let the, sit back and let him do it. Like, if it was a bit that you scheduled on the side of the, uh, on the main f stage floor where the, it, it was meant to go back and forth i get that right. but if this is you're trying to do a fake kind of impromptu thing here you don't need to be part of it all the time carson like, knew that he's like if you sink if you sink it's your own fault if you succeed it's your fault it's on my show either way it works for me but he loved to see these people go off and let like what, what do i do to tee tee you off here you go. Softball pitch. Let them go. Johnny sat there, smoked cigarettes, and laughed the entire time. <laughs> Which is how you should do it. Um, I thought I had the clip. Damn it. I thought it was in here. That's all right. Oh, maybe I, I do. Uh, oh, it was the same clip, you? wasn't it? Oh. It was. was it? Okay. It's the okay. same clip. That's why I didn't have it. Okay. Uh, here okay. we go. It's at the end. Oh, that's right. He's sitting. Okay. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay. Shut up. Oh. That's right, he was doing all like sign. Okay. Good to see you, Leon. Face me mucho. Should. Should. Good to see you, Leon. Face me mucho. Oh, it, the, the the bit cut. Whoever edited this video clipped it. Oh, that's a bummer. Fuck. Alright, let me see if I can find it real quick. I apologize for that. That's okay. Well, we got the main part of the video, which is what we were looking for. But again, this just sparked us for almost an hour straight, constantly doing that, thinking of like lyrics to songs, doing other songs, and just talking like Leon Redbone for a good hour. And it yeah. just, you're right, it just made me appreciate his work even more. And I actually started looking up a few songs after, before going to bed, and it was just like, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm not really. Could we. Of all Lang Syne? Who is that guy? That's, I don't know who he is. He just was. <laughs> kind of, kind of take us guy? out tonight with all Lang Syne. All Lang Syne. Well, I, I wish you'd help me out with this because I do this so infrequently. Well, I only know Paul. I love that. Yeah. I'm telling you, it looks like Peter Sellers. Should. 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 <laughs> Such a good bit. Should. Yeah. Should. 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 Should
acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot? In days of old anxiety. <laughs> That's so good. My dear, We'll drink a cup of kindness and take a cab. <laughs> so good. Good Okay, but see, like, that's so perfect. That's television. That's performing. That's yeah. making it about you and knowing when not to make it about you for the sake of the moment or what's yeah. going on. Everybody now just has to hop in and, oh, look at me. Look at me. I'm part of this, too. It's like you could step back and just let something happen. The fact that he's Love sitting it. there and playing it and he, he just panned. He's like, uh, should. Oh, should. He's like, he's like, uh, yeah, should. Guys, and it's like, thank you. Guy was a damn genius, musical genius, Smart. comic timing, performer. I just regret not really getting into him until, you know, well after his passing. But yeah, such is life. All right. Um, I guess everything else, we've gone pretty late, so we can everything else can wait. Uh, oh, actually, we do. We have one last thing before we get to segment two. Okay. Um, mu- uh, it falls into the music category here. Cypress Hill. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because if we didn't do it here, I was going to move it to page two anyway. No, it's not Hits from the Bong, even though it's a great song. Or Tequila Sunrise. Or uh, I'm trying to go other songs besides Insane in the Membrane. What's your name? What's your number? Yeah, I'm trying to get to know you. Because they, they did that too. They did the rap version and the rock version of that song. Remember how because yes, um, they had that double album? Yeah, yeah. Because they had rap superstar and rock superstar, and you had to get two different albums to get that that cover. This was before any digital versions of anything, so you had to actually get both CDs. Right. Where did the uh, did you move the article somewhere? Uh, I didn't touch it. Why am I no. not seeing? It? Oh, you know what? It is. It's on. Uh, it's it. It is on page two. Damn it! All right, you moved to page two. No, it was been there. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I found the leg article. That's all that matters. Where the hell is it? I know you did. I, why can't I find... <laughs> where on page two is it? Oh, there it is. All right, now I'm seeing it. It's at the top. So, uh, Cypress Hill made an announcement that they're doing something the Simpsons came up with over <laughs> 30 years ago. And one of my favorite episodes. It was the episode where Homer was working as a carnival freak, uh, a sideshow attraction, if you will, for Lollapalooza. And Cypress. I know, but people don't know (laughs) Hullabalooza. They didn't Um, learn. So, like, there was all these big acts at the time, like Sonic Youth was on there, Smashing Pumpkins. Peter Frampton was on there, I think, as a joke. Uh, Cypress Hill, um, a few other things. So. There's a scene, a very famous scene, and it's uh, a bit of a sight gag here. I'll I'll bring this up now. We'll watch that before we get into what Cypress Hill is actually doing here. Here it is. Hello, bands. Who is playing with the London Symphony Orchestra? Come on, people. Somebody order the London Symphony Orchestra. Possibly while high. Cypress Hill, I'm looking in your <laughs> looking direction. In your direction. <laughs> hey, man, did we order an orchestra? <laughs> What's up with this orchestra, man? Where'd the orchestra come from? I don't know, man. They didn't tell me about this, man. <laughs> we gotta do, we gotta do some. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We think we did. Uh, do I love you know that they're the they're so high all the time. We mostly know right, classical. This, this is the best part. But we could give it a shot. So good. This I like. This I like. Yeah. So it's one of my favorite episodes. Such a great uh, gag from The Simpsons, and to this day, people still talked about. It. They joked forever with yeah. Cypress Hill in interviews, and they're so amazed that that thing still stuck with them. Like that, people still ask them about that. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got something to share with you, and I think you're going to be excited by this.
Yeah, I haven't seen the trailer. <laughs> Band to rehearsal, please. The London Symphony Orchestra is tuned and ready. So good. Cypress Hill, the LSO is ready for you. Huh? The LSO? <laughs> <laughs> we actually ordered the London Symphony Orchestra? Maybe we did. We better get to rehearsal then. Let's go. What a great bit to stick with. So good. July 10th, Royal Albert Hall in London. Cypress Hill will be performing with the London Symphony Orchestra. It's the greatest thing ever. It needs like, I to love be... S&M with Metallica, but this is so much just more fun I was going to make that comparison. That that was a double album, too, that they put out, right? S&M? S&M, yeah. Right? Fantastic. In fact, the orchestral version of Hero of the Day, Dude, you're the, not going to get much it. better, fantastic. right? They need to release this in some way, shape, or form, both yep. as the music, but also the concert. Like mm -hmm. if they release the whole thing on YouTube or if they put it out to uh, to rent like a concert movie, like Taylor Swift's tour movie kind of thing. If they did it mm -hmm. that way, this needs to get out everywhere because could you imagine how great that's going to be? And when that succeeds, I'm not saying if, when that succeeds, that is a great precedence that you have two major musical acts in history from two major genres Showing that they can work with orchestral backing. You need to do more of this now. But yeah, it needs to be legendary bands. It doesn't need to be like smaller level bands that are doing stuff with an orchestra. You know, just because Oleander did uh, The Reason and they have an oboe and a fucking cello playing in the background does not count <laughs> as a big orchestral version. But like if Dave Grohl took the Foo Fighters and they did Foo Fighters with a with an orchestra, um, right. I think Billy Joel and Elton John may have already done stuff like that. But, you know, Bon Jovi, if you want to go older, Bon Jovi. Uh, but big level bands, if they're going to go out there, Taylor wants to do it. Beyonce wants to do it. Something like that. It has to be that level with an orchestra behind it. Uh, of course, Aaron saying Hoobastank. Yes. Everyone's well, clamoring you. for uh, what was their song? They had two songs. The Reason and... Um uh, oh, they God, didn't do actually, out of, not out of control. What was that other one? Oh, Heather got my Oleander reference. Thank you. Somebody gets me. <laughs> somebody gets it. Yeah, you need somebody big. Say Dave Grohl. Okay, here you go. Frankie Bronson, you actually have a, a valid comment here. Uh, Nirvana did it as an orchestral, uh, not an orchestral, an acoustic thing. They had the cello, whatever, or something else in there. But say, take you it. You got to do something that shouldn't work, but will. Like you're not seeing, you know, you don't see Limp Biscuit doing what know, if, chocolate starfish with the London Symphony. What Bianca if Star Dave Grohl and the other guy who was a senator at one point or, or congressman, the bass player that threw the fucking thing up at the MTV Awards and smashed his head with the bass? Uh, if you get them no, back Selleck? together and they go and they do something with an orchestra and do a couple of Nirvana songs, what what's going to be better than that? That would be fun, right? Yeah, that would no, be cool. No, Frankie, the Verve Bittersweet Symphony. They did that. Uh, they stole the the thing from the Rolling Stones who did it. But see, here's the thing. And paid that through was... the nose to this day because they lied about the, the, the rights to it. The difference is, is they intentionally did that to release that particular song. That was made for that. Cypress Hill did not do their album thinking this would work well with the London Symphony Orchestra. Right. Then a bit came around, made a joke. And then years later, they're like, let's actually make it work. You know what I mean? Metallica doesn't make their, you know, their songs to work with, you know, Michael Kamen and the San Francisco Orchestra. They just made it work. That's the difference. Yeah, you We're, rearrange you know, it. Bittersweet Symphony, it's clearly made to be that song. Well, I would love to see more of that. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see Cypress Hill uh, doing that with the Without London Symphony Orchestra. But I got to pop in real quick because... Chad, Normal World host of on the, the Blaze show. is Chad on here show. on Twitter. Uh, not there's on Twitter. Uh, there's Garrett, iTunes. Dave Chad Landau's co-host. There you go. Did we lose him too? 
Oh, there he is. Oh, my God. I'm here. There he is. <laughs> oh, there's Chad. It's a patriarchal show. You have Alex Stein on. You don't want the women talk. I knew I was. This was a mistake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this, this is, is how we want TV. it. Yeah, we don't let the women talk around here. We want them just in the kitchen, mainly, making sandwiches. <laughs> Alex Stein's on one of the kitchens that we have here. All right. Well, we're not going to do the whole thing, but you go over. Uh, you can see Normal World over yeah, on uh, YouTube. You can watch the episode right now. Our pal yeah, and it'll, it'll be there. there later on to watch it. So stick with us. Don't don't go away. Yeah. Section segment two coming up. All right. Uh, we will do that when we come back. Like you said, segment two: television, movies, streaming updates, all that garbage that you need to know about. We'll do it after this. More. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on all social medias at It's Eric Nagel for ways to watch or listen to the show, both live and on demand. Go to It's Eric Nagel dot com. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. And it's back. Segment two of the show, Eric Jordan here with you to tell you about all the stuff going on in television, movies, all your streaming updates. There's a lot going on in the world of entertainment, and who has the time to pay attention and watch all that? Pretty much the rest of the world does not have that time, but we are different. We have nothing yeah. going on in we our lives, so this is what we focus on here. We start off each segment, too, with talking about things that we watched and we recommend or maybe not recommend. Jordan, what have you watched lately? Um, I am caught up on X Men '97. Third episode came out this past Wednesday. It it's fantastic. The show is great. If you're into the X Men cartoons from the '90s, this is perfect. Like it just continues on. The stories are awesome. The last episode was kind of like a weird fever dream. Um, it was cool. It, it's definitely a recommend. I can see why it's getting high praise. I don't understand why the showrunner got fired a week before the show premiered. It's a perfect show. So <laughs> something else happened i'm gonna look into it but yeah that's how uh what i've been watching i went and saw late night with the devil the other night i want to see that i'm not going it to is. the theater for it but i can't wait to watch it on demand it'll be i think it's coming out on shutter um next month April. Oh, shutter I don't it, it's shutter put the movie out so shutter put that one out all so right. all right fair fine so it's uh it's fantastic takes place in the late 70s um Main character runs a late night, mid, like midnight variety show, kind of like a Johnny Carson show. And he's competing with the ratings and he's trying so hard to beat Johnny finally. And uh, he does a Halloween show and some crazy shit happens. And it's, it's, I don't want to give too much away. This movie is really, really, really good. So I, I highly recommend that one. I do want to um, see it. On your recommendation today, I did watch the Dave Attell Hot Cross Buns it's comedy special on so Netflix. so damn funny. I was laughing so I love hard. Dave Attell. He has, he, he's had, um, he had one other special called Captain Miserable. Yes. And then before that, his infamous uh, CD that he put out there. Well, I'm spacing on the name of it now. But he put it out right at the time he was still doing Insomniac on Comedy Central. Right. Dave Attell has never not been funny. His delivery is so quick, and he just goes from the next thing to the next thing to the next, but it's all really funny. Very minor spoiler for that special, because he dresses like a dock worker all the time now, and he's been that way for like the last 20 years. He wears like a, a gray uh, hoodie and this black jacket right. and uh, a wool cap, and it, one of the... <laughs> There's not a lot of stories. <laughs> like he starts a story just keeps and going, then it, yeah. it changes into something else. Something else. So there, every joke is a setup to another joke. So it's just rapid fire jokes and it, it's hilarious. But he, at one point he turns around and goes, oh, I know what you're thinking. I'm a guy who looks like he knows his way around a tugboat. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Just such a throwaway line because he, he compared the way he looked to being at January 6th as yeah. well. He's like, I know what you're thinking. I'm like, wow. The other one line I, I like too, and it was kind of early on, he goes, racism is wrong no matter how funny and spot on it is. Yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck? That might was, have to be the yeah. show closer going racism forward now. Racism is funny. Racism is funny. <laughs> he goes, now, no, let's look here. Racism. How did he say it? No, I don't want to do it. Fuck it. Uh, let let yeah. him go. No, it, you go check don't it out. It's really, really it. funny. No need to react um, it. It's on Netflix if you want to go see it. it. It's on the front page right now. And then um, you and I both saw Ghostbusters we Frozen did. Empire. We did. We um, did. Together, of course. But yes, we saw it. Same weekend. There's a lot of needless nonsense in the movie. But when it came down to the big bad, 
the lore around it and everything, I thought that was pretty interesting. Apparently, it comes from a story from the Ghostbusters cartoon in the mm-hmm. 80s with the Frozen Empire that they uh, they built on. So um, there was some dialogue that just was gut-punching cringe. Yes. And the one I'll tell you about is early in the beginning of the movie. They're driving through Manhattan in the Ecto-1, and they're trying to capture a, a ghost, and they're, they have drones with tra- uh, traps hooked into them now to fly mm-hmm. out to try to get them and stuff. And it wasn't working. Every time they do it, the, the ghost went in a different direction. Something prevented them from capturing it. The little girl, well, she's not little. She's like 15. Yeah. Actually, she's like 19 or something, but playing a 15 Yeah, she's like in her like late, ni- yeah, late teens, early 20s now, but yes. And they're like, what are you doing? And she gets into the seat that shoots out the side now that yeah. that feature. And she goes, I have ghosts to bust. And then and you're like, oh, that's not even a line to get a kid excited about it. No. You know, it, what bothered me is they she's probably the smartest character in the movie, like just canonically. Right. But she's an idiot in this movie. Like she just makes dumb mistake after dumb mistake. And it's like, well, they're trying to show that is for intelligence. She is. She's still a kid. You yeah. Know? She's not street smart enough. No. Um, there was a lot of really cringy lines. I didn't have any problem with the old cast. Like, I think Bill Murray was almost kind of pointless in this movie. He kind of was there, and then he shows up, and then he disappears, and he shows up again at the end, and that's it. Um, Ernie Hudson's awesome for what he was doing. You know, Ray was great running the occult bookstore. The 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 podcast kid, as much as I hate that his name is podcast in this movie, I think he was funny. Like, he had some funny lines. Uh, the, I like... What I did like in the movie is I like how they expanded it past the firehouse. It wasn't just the firehouse. Yeah, exactly. Right? Where they brought up something logical. It's like they're talking about the containment tank and like, mm. when was the last time anyone emptied this thing? It's been 40 something years and they just right. keep dumping it in. It's like, it's eventually it's going to fill up, right? Well, and Janine was like, it's the 80s. We didn't think of that far ahead. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. That makes sense. So they developed a new complex with a new containment system and all this other stuff going forward. I'm like, okay, that's great. I like now, that cause now progression because it makes sense, right? Um, there was too much going on with the family. Too many right. of the family component roles about, you know, a potential stepdad and and one kid turning 18 and wanting to be more, treated more like an adult and all this other stuff. It's like... No one gives a fuck about the family dynamics. They, it, By the way, they th- Finn Wolfhard's character was almost pointless in this movie. He's a whiny douche. He, you know what it is? He's the will of Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he had this little side plot. Like, he was trying to fix stuff around the house. I'm 18. I'm an adult now. And yeah. he's trying to find Slimer. Cut that out. This movie would have been no different. There was no reason for no him need to be for in this that. Movie. A lot of the family shit. I know they're trying to make it more family friendly and stuff like that. But Ghostbusters right. was not family friendly. It wasn't overly adult, but it wasn't family friendly. No, Ray right? got jerked off by a ghost in the firehouse in the first movie. Come Stick on. to the actual goat. Like if you went forward and had more of these. Um, deep stories of ancient spiritual societies and beings and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. That's what's interesting. Like delving back into old cultures that they thought were dead, but now it's, they're resurrecting their, their gods and, and and all that kind of shit. That's what Ghostbusters does. Well, when they were showing the whole frozen, um, I forgot the ghosts, Garaka, Garaka coming in when shit was turning frozen and and uh, he was going after people and killing things you, and you look at him like this is kind of scary was good it's impending like real like menacing looking like the design was cool yeah but then what's his Underused, name the guy cool. from the fucking um kumail nanjiani yeah it, Ugh, you 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 put character. it right so annoying is kumail always kumail and everything that he does Every He's, character he plays, it's just him in a different I'm going movie. to be the goofy Indian guy. And, you know, I don't know what's happening here or what can I right. do to be a part of this. And you're just like, why is he here? Like, if you had somebody else that took the role less goofy and more serious for what his family, I don't want to give that away, but like what his lineage is. Yeah. You'd be like, wow, that's kind of cool. I mean, you saw it coming. The connection but, was cool, but the just the... 
the payoff with him sucked. Like, I just, it, he annoyed me. Like, Patton Oswalt's in this movie, and he did it right. He, he wasn't he annoying. Was there, he was there what he needed to be. He was and very he fit, cool. He was he, like a goofy, like, he looks like... A librarian. He, his, he portrayed a person that would have been friends with Ray. Right. Like, and he then, was just as uh, a bit off and, and mind-numbing as Ray yeah, is. he was the basement-dwelling librarian nerd that... It's the same as Ray's a cult. Like right. he was just stuck in his little world. He came in, gave us the lore, gave us the backstory, and then you never saw him again. That's yeah. it. He was there to be perfect. You know, he was he was a uh, he was an expert. He was the go to guy to help. He was our exposition story guy, and then focus back on there. Um, right. The main Ghostbusters outside. Well, Ray helped move some of the story along. I liked Ray's. Winston part in was this, really honestly. important to what was going on, but then you know. Bill Murray showed Venkman up and was not supposed to be. Just, wasn't really doing much. Um, even uh, Janine Melnitz, Annie Potts. I thought character. she was going to be bigger in this, and she like, wasn't. No, there was get, a part get, that get, actually made me mad. They need to do this. There was a thing a while ago that they were going to talk. I think it might have been Seth Rogen's idea that they were going to have a new team, but they were a different division of New York. Mm -hmm. like the the, the original is the downtown one they may have been the up you know that not the like the upper parts of manhattan that you think upper west side upper east side where it's the money the part past that going up to the bronx that nobody thinks and realizes is still part mm -hmm. of manhattan but also just like terrible they could have been somewhere there or they could have been the jersey you know chapter of the ghostbusters dealing with stuff over in new jersey they need to do something like that where it needs to have a different version of it Keep the family one for the whatever you're going to do. Okay. But they need to have something different and maybe something more adult. Like when mm -hmm. they were doing some of the horror stuff with this spirit, it worked. It yep. was good. But then you pull it back real quick because the kids are there and you got to have the kids not be terrified by all this stuff. Kids used to get terrified by the dumbest shit in the 80s. AT e. used to be scary for people. Like when he stuck oh, his yeah. neck up when he run or he was uh, hiding in the closet and stuff like that was scary to kids and it wasn't meant to be, but it was do an adult version of Ghostbusters. Just have them be a different chapter or somewhere else and mm -hmm. do more terrifying like an international one. Maybe they go around the world dealing with special uh, yeah, occult kind know. of shit. They did that with Men in Black, and that was a terrible movie. Like stick to just a basic story and you don't always have to do world ending shit. Every movie, it's like, guess what? The big bad is going to end the world. I'm like, okay, we we saw that before. Right. How many more world ending giant ghosts are there going to be? I think like, they needed to do an adult one where it's it's could be a PG 13 if not R, where you're seeing ghosts kill people. You're seeing ghosts do real damage and real terrifying stuff. I know there's other franchises that like Conjuring and all that do spirits and shit like that, but do it in the world of the Ghostbusters. Right. Look at the video game that came out in the 2000s that was on the, the Xbox game. and they redid it. You can get it on Steam. They remastered it, it and whatever. Switch, yeah. But that had a lot of the Ghostbusters lore in there. You had the original Ghostbusters. You're the new trainee. You're the new guy yeah. joining their pack. And there's some, there's some terror, like scary shit in the game too. Yeah. Put that to the movies, make it an adult version of Ghostbusters. You don't need to be the family shit all the time. And when people are saying, Oh, that's in the spirit of the original. That wasn't. It was no. not. Ghostbusters was a cult hit that became a massive hit for the franchise later on, but it wasn't that big a hit when it came out. It was well known. It you could do uh, that now. Do a, a different version of Ghostbusters. They have yeah. an animated series that's coming to Netflix. Now, that's probably going to be sort of the same kind of tame stuff that the 80s one was, but the 80s had some scary characters and scary stories. Shadow King. The fucking... Um, boogeyman the boogeyman yeah people to this day and he, he talk about that show people reference the boogeyman because he had a i love the toys the big nose he had half the hooves on him and stuff disappearing in and out of people's closets they couldn't mm -hmm. catch him um shimebuku yeah they got the the a new series coming so the animation's probably going to be great because i mean look say what you want about masters of the universe it looks good castlevania looked fantastic w right. when they did that stuff so if they're going to do the ghostbusters right they could make it more of an adult instead of a goofy family kind of thing. I think they'd have a real hit on their hands. Yeah. A couple of things like there was two things in the movie that really actually annoyed me. One of them was that part where the, the possessor ghost jumps into a pizza 
and, and me and Aaron are sitting there going, who leaves an entirely full pizza on the center island of your kitchen? Right. When they weren't in that building for like the longest time. And then there's another part where they're outside the library, the New York City library, and they got the two lions out there. The possessor d- ghost goes into the, the lion. Five cop cars show up just as this lion's jumping through the air. The little girl destroys it. And they're giving her shit for it. And I'm sitting mm-hmm. there going, none of these cops saw what just happened. Well, like it just, it just, that was a really nod back. Me. That was a nostalgic nod back to the original there Ghostbusters where they were doing, remember the ballroom scene where yeah. they destroyed the ballroom trying to capture Slimer. But nobody was there to witness the destruction of the ballroom. That's the difference. Five cop cars full of cops showed up, saw that little girl, saw yeah. that lion. She yeah. destroyed it, and they were bl- they sh- they're mad at her as if this wasn't a, an animate object jumping out at her. Like there, were, look, there were problems a with it. There are parts of the movie yeah. that are still good. You know, some of the nostalgic stuff. stuff. Was the Walter Peck shit was just. I feel fan like service. they should have done more. There was no for need them. for him to do that. I did um, like that guy at the end where he you could just hear him off yell off in the distance. Are you going to apologize? I hear you have no dick. Yeah, that was funny. And I was like, okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but then they did the same thing with the containment unit again, like they did in the first movie, which was no need to There's do There's a lot that. of redos. And a lot of the ghosts were not sucked back in. So they're like, oh, we no. got to go back. In. So, all right. So you, 40 years of ghosts, you just let them back out. And now you got to go capture them again. So dumb. Well, yeah, um, I didn't like how the third act of this movie felt like the third act of the last movie, like just almost down to the exact same beats of needing help and the little girls doing stuff like it's almost just a shot for shot remake. And I just wish the, they would have done more. The third Ghostbusters, where that whole beginning sequence where with Egon capturing um, Vic, uh, what's the, the dog's name, Vic? Not Zool, the other one, the male dog. You know oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Vic oh, something. God. Captures that, runs off, is is like racing to get back to his farm. He's trying to capture all of them to try to put an end to Gozer and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Knew that it fucked up, hid the trap, then he was going to... That whole thing was a great horror movie. Mm-hmm. That whole opening thing, which was like five minutes, ten minutes, was a great horror movie. The f- Discovering the family, going to his, um, to his farm, farm the earthquakes, that all that stuff. All great part of a horror movie. When you had the little stayed puff marshmallows in the store, brought it back to being kiddie stuff again. Bringing Paul Rudd at oh, school, made again. it back to being kiddie stuff again. There were elements that it was a really good movie and elements that were just like, oh, what are you doing? Same thing with this. There was a lot of yeah. elements that could have been a really good, scary kind of movie with with some of the dark humor involved in it. Um, look, I, I would say, I'd say go see it. Go go see it and make your own call on it. It's not a terrible movie that I'd say avoid it. It's not like the female Ghostbusters, which was god awful. Oh, the worst. This is fine. It's fine for what it is. And, and but let's it, be it, fair. Remember, it, it is bad. what it is. And, and, and let's be clear. And this is on record. It's only bad because the cast was female. Right. Anyway. Hey, what's out now? Women will like what I tell them to like. There you go. <laughs> All right, so what's out right now? Uh, as you were saying, X-Men 97, new episode of uh, episode three, I believe, is on Disney+. Plus. Um, you had the first two episodes came out last week, and then it's a weekly episodic release until it's done. Is it 10 episodes? Of X-Men 97? I think it's maybe eight. I'll check. I think right. it might be 10. Hold on a second. I have, I have, to, I have to do this real quick, Lucy Moody. Was it better or worse than Ghostbusters 2? There's nothing wrong with Ghostbusters 2. No, not at all. That is a solid movie, and I will defend it. For They even reference it with the... the they don't make Statue Nikes in her down. size, Ray. <laughs> She's a harbor chick. Yeah. So uh, I would say it's it, it's it feels very Ghostbusters 2 in the sense that it's kind of almost remaking Oh, the no, she movie. named him after a hot dog. <laughs> Ghostbusters yeah, there was 2 no, is there was no enjoyable. baby. I don't know why people hated it. I Ghostbusters love, I love 2 is enjoyable. Ghostbusters 2. Hey, 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 can I get one of those protac- proton packs from my kid brother? <laughs> like, Thanks, Bobby Brown. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, moving yeah, on. In moving theaters on. this weekend, Godzilla and King Kong, The New Empire. I am going to see it. Um, There were not many people that had bought tickets. <laughs> no. And uh, honestly, okay, so a story came out the other day saying that they were holding off reviews 
till release day. So usually when someone I think someone they says, realized they're screwed because of how well Minus One did. Here's the thing. It's tracking, well, it, Rotten Tomatoes has it at like 60%, which is still technically fresh. Right. I honestly did not see this tracking at 60%. Like, eh, that might be worth seeing. So I'm going to check it out eventually. I don't know if I'm going to see it this weekend, you know, but uh, it, 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 it looks silly, just silly fun. Oh, oh man. So this will be nice because there's not going to be a lot of people in just, the theater for this. Just you and the homeless. But I will say this is not very <laughs> confident. So remember the 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 white out parts are the tickets purchased. So the screening I'm going to tomorrow. Oh, there we go. Oh well. That's how many seats were sold. I mean you go during the day on a Friday well it's good Friday though. A lot of people might have it off. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't and know. You would think this would be a kid movie too. Like you'd bring your kids to see this stuff. So But anyway, I'm going tomorrow. I will go and see it and I will talk okay. about it next week. Everybody wants to know why the hell he's pink. We will find out. I think he's just in his rebellious punk stage of his life, but <laughs> who knows? Uh, available on Netflix. We mentioned David Tell's Hot Cross Buns comedy special. Please go watch that. And then Three Body Problem. What is that? It's a new sci-fi series that apparently everyone that I keep talking to says it's really, really good. So I'm going to check it out this week and um, I'll let you know how good it is. But it, they're heavily promoting it on... Netflix, they did a worldwide um, promotion um, the other day where um, I believe they were flooding people's like big screens, advertising screens, everything that says you are bugs, okay. which means it's like aliens thinking we're, you know, expendable and stuff like that. So I, I've heard really good things. I'm going to check it out, but that's on Netflix now. All right. So. I don't know if I'll watch that, but uh, we have All that uh, over on Hulu. We are the lucky ones. It's a uh, World War II period piece um, about, I think, the Holocaust and the Jews and things like that. Again um, with the Jews. Always with the Jews. Can we once have a World War II thing that doesn't involve... That's horrible to say, but yes, you get it. <laughs> uh, video on demand, Iron Claw. Yeah, it's a good movie. I might have to go see that. It's really good. Uh, coming up, mm, nothing really for a couple of weeks to make a mention of. Uh, all right. So moving on. Bad yeah, Boys trailer is out. I saw it. Do you care? I think it, it looks, looks better. Terrible. It looks better than the third movie. Third one's terrible too. Right. This one looks a little bit better, but only because they're doing things with camera work that looks weird and interesting, like where he throws the gun and it's like tracking the gun. Right. I'm like, why Why do I hate that and like it at the same time? Martin Lawrence looks bad. The jokes well, feel the same. Well, he had a stroke, same. didn't he? I don't know. He gained a lot of weight. Like or a he doesn't heart look, attack or something? He doesn't look like he's gained a lot of weight in the movie, but he does look puffy. It's weird. But not like, you know, extradition treaty, go, you know, go into the Caribbean kind of puffy. What if he's in this movie, he takes on the um, the um, Murdoch role from Lethal Weapon and he's just like, two more days to retirement. <laughs> he's just all complaining and tired, doesn't want to d deal with this anymore. Uh, it's Murtaugh. How do you say Murdoch? Murdoch. Yeah, Murtaugh. My bad. It's been a while. It's okay. It's been a while. It's been a while. Since I saw that movie. All right, moving on. We talked about uh, Cypress Hill, so we don't need to do that. Alamo Draft House is up for sale. Yeah, Again. I know we've been talking about Alamo Draft House a couple times, and it came up, I think, like two weeks ago where we were talking about Alamo. But yeah, apparently they're going to be up for sale. Um, several sources are telling Deadline that the Alamo Draft House Cinema Circuit is up for sale. The news comes about a week and a half before CinemaCon. The major studios and exhibitors annual love in in Las Vegas. Um, some of the studios have heard sales pitch for the Cinephile Circuit, which counts 41 locations across 13 states. Uh, they are, are done, no, done. There are no bidders yet, and there is no word on the asking price for Alamo Draft House. So I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. Like I said, they kind of cut and run out here in Arizona, and that's why we have uh, the Majestic movie chain. But yeah, apparently it was a lot worse, even though they liquidated a few. They, uh, they're going to be trying to sell them off. I don't know if they'll retain the Alamo Draft House name, right. if they're going to capitalize on that notoriety. But yeah, they're up for sale. We'll see. 
right. <laughs> it's, it's just sad because they kind of revolutionized nationally, at least the the whole idea of yeah, your movie theater needs to be upgraded. You need to have better foods uh, and beverage selections. You need to actually have table service where you can have food served to you, almost like the old nightclubs. Like if you saw the beginning of um, Goodfellas. You mm-hmm. know, where they're all sitting there with their the wives or their girlfriends, those tables to see a show. That's kind of what Alamo was doing. So you could watch that. Well, and enforce rules. Like, shut up. Get off don't the phones. Talk. Don't talk. Phone. All of that stuff there. But you had a menu. You had good stuff. It was like, if it's going to be a lot of money, might as well make it worth it for you to go for the experience. And it, it, I think because of what they did, it definitely did kick the ass of a lot of other theater chains. Mm-hmm. Like Regal and AMC desperately needed to start upgrading their stuff because of... Uh, even though it was bigger than that, I'll say boutique style um, theaters offering food yeah. and, and other things like that. Cinemark is definitely doing that. They they up their game with all that stuff. It's just said that they kind of revolutionized the way you have your theater experience and, and they're, uh, they're going down. All right. Uh, moving on. Netflix. Uh, May 3rd. Jerry Seinfeld has a movie. Now you're thinking, well, the last movie he did was B movie, and no one really uh, cared about that. Right. But this, as from what I understand, he wrote this during the pandemic with okay. one of his writers from Seinfeld, the guy who uh, Spike Ferenson, who uh, created the Soup Nazi episode and a yep. few other things. Uh, they were kicking this idea around about pop tarts, and during the pandemic, there was like, well, let's do some writing and let's make a movie about the pop tarts. And it started off as a goof and just something for them to do. So they would write and then it turned into a whole thing. And they just, uh, Seinfeld was on the tonight show. He said, we just finished a month ago and now it's coming out for everybody to see. So it's Mm -hmm. called unfrosted written and starring Jerry Seinfeld. It's about the creation of the pop tart. And what they're mimicking is the, uh, the space race from the (laughs) sixties between the United States and Russia about, you know, Oh my God, we, they got a satellite into space. We got to get something on there. We got to be the first man on the moon. So apparently, um, I guess it's Post that owned Pop-Tarts at the time. Is it one I of the companies? So. I think or Kellogg's. It was, or Kellogg's, okay. So Kellogg's owned Pop-Tarts and they were coming out with this. And, I, and the other company got word that this was going to be out. And they're like three months out from this thing being released. So they're racing to make their own product to compete with pop tarts. So that's the whole premise is that the two cereal companies are battling out trying to see who could get out the pop tart first and who would have the better version of it. Um when I looked at the cast, Thomas Lennon's in it, so I'm yeah. already sold. I like There's a lot of people does. in this movie. I don't know who else is in the movie besides Sidevell and Thomas Lennon. Oh wait, Jack uh, Bauer? Met Jack McBrayer. McBrayer. Yeah. From uh, 30 Rock and a lot of Conan stuff he's in it too. So uh, look for that. May 3rd. The trailer's out right now. You can go and watch that. Uh, we talked yeah, the, about the, the trailer's Ghost- very silly. We talked about the Ghostbusters animated series. Uh, Happy Gilmore apparently has a sequel in development, and it was, uh, I don't know if it was purposely leaked. They're saying accidental, but I don't know if it was accidental. By uh, Christopher McDonald. Do you know who he is? Uh, that's Shooter McGavin. That is Shooter McGavin. He uh, was doing an interview and uh, said, uh, made mention that uh, they were working on Happy Gilmore 2. So that apparently has been confirmed and it's being worked on. I don't have a day or time. I think it's very, very early. Date or time, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So look for that in the probably next year or so. Pirates of the Caribbean uh, has been in the news because their announcement that they're doing a reboot. Of Pirates of the Caribbean. Now there's also word that it might be a female-led pirate because, of course, There's they got to do so that. Much going on. Uh, all of it is speculation, other than they are rebooting it. And I had my notes somewhere here where one of the producers said they were reboot. It's, it was easier to reboot the franchise than try to make time with everybody's schedules to get them all back. So, you but I'm like, that's copy. not a good just, enough just, reason. Just read, just read the copy. It's right there. Just no, I'm I'm getting mad for a second. It's not a good enough reason to reboot. It's like, well, it's harder to get everybody else and their schedule to do all of this stuff when we could just reboot it and start all over again. Yeah. Look, his, there's his, some his, of those movies that were not that good, but that whole franchise is beloved by a lot of people. And they yeah. loved Johnny Depp 
is Captain Jack Sparrow, mm-hmm. and what's his name as um, uh, Bar- Bar- uh what's the Barbosa? Barbosa. I can't I can't think of the actor's name, but they love them. Jeffrey Rush, Orlando. Thank you, and Orlando Bloom is you know in. I don't. I think one of the movies he's not in. He was not in the fourth movie, right? And then finding the ongoing joke of finding Jack Sparrow's family members because he said he based Jack Sparrow on Keith Richards, and then Keith he Richards makes an appearance as his dad. And in the last movie they did, his unc- he ran into his uncle in prison, and his uncle's Paul McCartney. Yeah, it's hilarious. It is. It's great that they're doing that kind of lineage with all of that stuff. But uh, anyway, Jerry Bruckheimer, you know, from lots of uh, big successful movies, My one of them being friend. Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I met him once. He's nice. Yes. Uh, who uh, also previously worked in all, the, uh, all five films. In the franchise, reveal plans to revive the franchise. When asked about the status of his Pirates and Top Gun franchises, Bruckheimer said the former will receive the reboot treatment. You don't know how they come together. You just don't know. Because with Top Gun, you have an actor, Tom Cruise, who's iconic and brilliant. And how many movies he's done... Uh, he does before he does Top Gun. I can't tell you. But we're going to reboot Pirates, so that is easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. So here's the thing. He Johnny Depp's not Top doing Gun. anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like He mentions Top Gun, and he associates Top Gun with uh, Tom Cruise. Why don't you associate Pirates with Johnny Depp? Yeah, I was going to say that. It's Five like movies Pirates, in, people know him. Pirates, of the, yeah. He's part of the He's ride. Synonymous. He's part of everything. Yeah. So that that is such a misguided quote to say, well, we're not going to do it with anyone in particular, so let's just go ahead and reboot it. That way we can just hire whoever and move forward it's instead of It's easier to dumb. put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. Fuck off. Yeah, that is, that is very tone deaf as far as how that works. Look, I don't even care about the other speculation, like, oh, it's going to be a female. Like, somebody posted that. Margot Robbie Margot was Robbie. supposed to be partying. Yeah. Well, that, that was a legit thing. She signed on to be the newest Jack Sparrow or whatever. And it just never got any traction. That would be fine if they kept the movie going and then they d- did stories about other pirates within that universe. Um, if she was doing the next Pirates of the Caribbean where she was, her pirate was the lead or whatever. If she's rebooted as Jack Sparrow or whatever, close enough to it just to redo the franchise, these, the movie companies don't fucking learn. And they're like what Bruckheimer yeah. here saying, you don't know what it takes to go in through here. Then don't do it. Right. Then don't do it right or don't do it at all. And then you complain, well, we lost so much money or or men didn't go see this because it was a female led movie. Whatever bullshit you're going to put out there as an excuse to why this sucks. Maybe the audience just goes, I don't want this. Right. You're trying to tell me we want this. And the audience is telling you we don't want this. And if the audience doesn't want to go see it and you're telling them oh they're wrong they're the problem that this (laughs) failed they're the fuck you you built something spent your money and tried to get people who have no financial interest in any of this to spend their money and you're going to tell them how you're isn't that what women complain about all the time isn't that gaslighting isn't that what it's like oh it's the audience's fault that this failed fuck you you don't listen to the audience you don't watch the trends you don't see what these people want if you want to make her the female lead of the pirate thing, that's fine. Continue it as part of the franchise. It's just a different story about a different pirate being told. Set and it in the world. Every now and then you yeah. mention the stories of Jack Sparrow. Some, maybe, maybe smaller characters or whatever crossover. Maybe there is a bigger crossover at some point. If that's successful and you do another one of her pirate yeah. stories, Jack shows up and they run into each other at some point. Maybe that's all you need. And it would still be okay. You don't need you know to go and change everything and tell the audience, no, it's the children who are wrong. And I love you using can, that excuse. I love that But quote. in this case here, no, it's not the children who are wrong. You could even set the movie coinciding with the other movies and every now and then intersperse footage of what was going on at the time. Jack's having his own adventure, but you're doing your own thing. Right. And you can still make it work. They've done it before and it just makes no sense. It's it's. And I go back to the female Ghostbusters movie. They tried to reboot the movie and make them the same characters instead of saying, this is in the same world. These are different people. Right. If and it's they like, were, again, if that's like the, the Seth Rogen idea, if they were a different chapter, like if it was franchised, 
Ghostbusters. Right. They were a different chapter. They say they were the L.A. ones, right? They were the L.A. Ghostbusters. Guys may not like it, but you would like, all right, it's in the same universe. It's still connected to everything mm-hmm. going on here. This is a different franchise, different chapter of it. That would be more acceptable than what the bullshit that they tried to pull. Agreed. Here, the fact that you said that it's so easy to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors... It's like you're you're lazy and bad at your job, and you're saying yeah. that about Jerry Breckheimer, who has put out put out a lot of great movies. Mm-hmm. And then, now this is what you're going to do: you're going to half ass it because it's going to be lazy. It's just easier to do. Then it's just don't easy do because it. we can get this guy because he's not doing anything. Then don't well, do probably it. Probably a reason why. Don't do it. Well, we're going to yeah. reboot Terminator. Okay, why? Well, all right, Arnold's too old to do the role anymore. Okay, that makes sense. I get it. And and all your continuations were terrible. They all flopped. No one gave a shit about them. What are we going to do? Well, now it's going to be... Uh, so we're going to bring in um, this UFC fighter. Uh, she's really great. Wait, what? No, she'll be great as... The, so she's going to be the Terminator? Yeah, and she's going to be looking for Sarah Connor. Wait, why don't you make this a different story, a different time period then? Mm-hmm. They always got to go back and like, well, no, we got to tie it into the original stuff and retell the original stuff in a different way. You don't. You don't. That's not how history works. And I know this is all f- you know, fantasy and fiction and all that stuff, but this is why the audience gets pissed. And this is why people don't like this shit that comes out. And this is why you're failing all the time because you don't listen. You think you know better and you're trying to dictate to the audience what they want. And when they're telling you they don't want that, you still go, no, you're wrong. You do want this. And when it fails, it's your fault you didn't want this. We told you you wanted this, and you didn't listen. Fuck off. Fuck all the way off. Yes, I agree. I'm going to have to call (laughs) up Jerry and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Jerry? What are you doing? Moving on. Saturday Night Live is actually getting a movie about Saturday Night Live. It's called Saturday Night Live Cast 1975. Here's what's interesting. It's being put out by Sony. Yeah. You would think this would be a Universal movie, Mm -hmm. considering NBC, Universal, all in the same company together. They have all the rights. They have everything there. They could do it all in-house, and they didn't. No, and it's because Jason Reitman wrote it. So he's writing it with no, the guy who helped him. Yeah, and he's tied in with Sony, and, and, yeah, uh, tied in with Sony because Pictures. of Ghostbusters. Yeah, so I think that's possibly why he All sold right. the script to Sony because he's got the deal with him right now. So, so they uh, Sony Pictures has enlisted five more actors to join the cast of Saturday Night Live 1975. They just added J.K. Simmons, who I love. I enjoy everything that he's in. Do you see who he's playing? Um, who signed the? He's, <laughs> really and milton burl that's pretty fucking funny it's hilarious okay i was like that's good stuff i would love to see who they cast for george carlin since george carlin was the first host of saturday night yeah, live i'm gonna look i'm gonna read it uh ahead. the film also stars G- uh, gabrielle labelle as lauren michaels i don't know who he is yeah some of these names i don't know i'm gonna have to look up to see rachel kind of sennett as like. rosie shuster don't know who that is cooper hoffman is dick ebersall that's the NBC executive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ella Hunt is Gilda, Gilda Radner. Kim Matula is Jane Curtin. Uh, Emily Farron as Lorraine Newman. Dylan O'Brien as right. Dan Aykroyd? Yeah, it kind of throws me off a little. But I think it works, too, in a weird way. I got to look at a photo real quick, because I've seen Dylan O'Brien in other things, but I don't see him as... As Dan Aykroyd? No, not at all. Well, while you're looking up, they also have Lamorne Morris as Garrett Morris, which I think works. Corey Michael Smith as Chevy Chase. Matt Wood as John Belushi. Nicholas Braun as Jim Henson. Uh, Tommy Dewey as Michael O'Donoghue. Uh, Nicholas Pod- Podney as Billy Crystal. Andrew Barth Feldman. Wait, Billy Crystal had nothing to do with the first five years of Saturday Night Live. I don't know. He wasn't a cast member till the 80s. Was he writer, though? No. Oh, I don't know. Were they watching Soap? I don't know. Maybe. Ooh, I'm going to watch Soap. Uh, Andrew Barth Feldman as Neil Levy, Kaya Garber as Jacqueline Carlin, and then Finn Wolfhard. Why is he in this? Stop with the Stranger Things kids. I don't know what he's gonna, who he's going to be, though, because they didn't even mention who he's playing. They didn't even Maybe cast anybody Carlin. for Bill Murray. <laughs> I don't know. 
Bill Murray wasn't the first season, but he was seasons two through four. Yeah. He took over when Chevy Chase got too big of a ego and, and left. All right, we'll see. Moving on. Uh another Winnie the Pooh fucking movie. They're making a third Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. Did the movie. first they, two do well? The first one was terrible. It did well enough and because you know, hor- again, this comes down to horror movies. Um are made cheap and any money they make is a win. So the first one, maybe not the greatest, but it made money. So they got a bigger budget and made the second movie, which is actually doing a three day run in the U S theaters for her, at least a week. It was running at a hundred percent on rotten tomatoes. And everyone's like, Oh shit, we got to see this movie. And then it dropped down to about 48%. Yeah. So it's terrible again, but they got a bigger budget. Um, apparently according to the producer producers, Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey three will have a bigger budget than the previous films and will introduce new characters from the original Winnie the Pooh stories, including rabbit, the heffalumps and the woozles. Um, this is about a week out from them announcing that they're doing a connected universe. So they're having a dark Pinocchio. They're going to have dark characters of all these, uh, well, Disney doesn't own Pinocchio. Disney doesn't own all this stuff. This is all, you know, you know what what's that term it's not um it's not public domain it is yeah that's what it is public domain no so but, all this stuff is public domain that's what a lot of like it. some of the disney stuff were from the brothers uh the the grim was it brothers grim grim brothers grim's fairy tales yeah the, yeah, the brothers grim yeah the grim from tales. grim's fairy tales like that so like the grim descendants still have some sort of ownership to it they can repurpose it and stuff like pinocchio is not originally there cinderella's i'm not Cinderella. snow white's not originally there the, well, the yeah, seven dwarfs are Disney's. christian anderson right like the seven dwarfs and steamboat willie slash mickey mouse are theirs yeah but that's that's a little bit different but like stuff like that it is public domain you you can make a dracula movie and not have to get the rights from you know Bram Stoker's family because it's old enough now to be public domain. There I are guess. no copyrights that can block it. So that's why they're like, hey, Just let's go ahead you can and do doesn't it. doesn't mean you should. Yeah, Just well, they're saying. making money and that's why they're making three of these well, things. Don't go watch it because it's fucking garbage. I haven't seen the other ones. Good. Good. And I watch a lot of dumb stuff. It's one of the stuff. more sensical <laughs> things I've heard you say tonight. Good for you. Uh, Flor- I saw this. Did I send you this link? Or- no, I didn't. I, I meant s- to. Uh, I saw the video she posted, and you may have mentioned it the other night, but yeah. Yeah, Florence Pugh did a video tour of Marvel's Thunderbolt set. Um, shows off her new suit, but then the rest of it really wasn't anything. You know, which just literally just back of I found walls. it interesting that they let her do that. I kind of like that she did that. Um, I think they are really trying to drum up any kind of excitement for this. Right. Like nobody is talking about it. No one's bringing it up. Like you would think this was a bigger deal. Like, oh my God, she she's going against the Marvel grain that they're letting her do. No one's talking about it. Yeah. And it sucks because I really, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by what they're doing. But I, I just, you know, it was a, it was a nothing. It was a nothing video. But maybe we'll see more of this kind of stuff. Well, uh, yeah, so she did a walkabout from her trailer to the back part of the lot to behind a set that you couldn't really see anything. Uh, anything that they did show was mostly her involvement mm-hmm. in it. And then she just was saying, oh, we're here at the Thunderbolts. And that was it. So that was interesting to see because Marvel never lets anything like that out. Mm-hmm. But uh, alas, there it was. So you can go see it on the Marvel uh, Instagram and their other social media sites and also hers. It's available there for you to check out. Um, what is this Twitch ban streams overlaid on boobs and butts? <laughs> yeah, so basically, there's a trend going around where streamers are projecting their gameplays on green screened body parts like butts and uh, uh, boobs. Oh, Twitch okay. is now putting a stop to it and will officially prohibit content and will focus on clothe intimate body parts such as the buttocks, groin, and breasts for extended periods of time. So basically. They keep changing things because people keep finding loopholes to their rules. Right. So they've keep they keep doing it. So as of March 29th, which is I believe tomorrow, so Friday, um, you cannot do a green screened ass to, to to put your gameplay out there. That's funny. I kind of want to see that now because I didn't <laughs> know about that. But do you see the other trend that's happening with Instagram? No, which which one? So apparently there's a ruling or something that they can't ban people doing breastfeeding videos, right? 
I've seen because it's lot considered of those come educational through. and it's considered something else that I'm forgetting. But anyway, women who are doing breastfeeding videos where you see their tits hanging out or, or tit hanging out and the kid latches on and everything, mm-hmm. but it's it's allowed. They can't ban you for that. A lot of these women that are on there that are that run like fan uh, not fan site. What is it called? Fansly, Fansly is an only fan. It, it's something fan and then only fan. There's like two mm-hmm. different things, and who are promoting those things have these dolls that we made fun of a while ago that look like oh, they're dead. Those are creepy. They're buying these things. They have them wrapped up and they'll just sit there and they kind of rip, just pull their shirts down. Their tits are hanging out and they walk over and they just put the fake doll on their boob and they're going like this. And then, you know, there's short clips. So then it, it re uh, mm-hmm. it loops, it repeats. And you go and you look at their profile and you go, oh, this is drawing attention to that link so they could go get people to come to their OnlyFans stuff. So that loophole is showing up everywhere. Because mm-hmm. I thought I it was my it, it was my algorithm. I asked other people and they're like, oh no, they've been seeing it. It's like, did you see the girls breastfeeding like the dead kids is some of the things I've seen online. And it's, <laughs> yeah, they bought those creepy dolls that we talked about mm-hmm. that, that that looks so terrifyingly real but it looks like the kid's dead they wrap them up they just take their shirts off and then they're kind of just doing they're not dancing and doing stuff they're just sitting there with their boobs out smiling at the camera holding the kid on their boob yeah it's the weird eye contact that i don't appreciate and yeah or any eye contact so you know <laughs> while that's happening so this is allowed yeah and if you see one of them it starts showing up in the um the, 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 the your feed your real no feed. what's it called not the search page the explorer page yeah um for that and you look at their hashtags too it's all front uh, fyp which is your for your something yeah for uh, you page for you page and then they have hashtags for the explorer page so it shows up in any like they marry the the hashtags to anything that's popular or trending right now like everything you, you look for wrestling stuff you look for uh, i follow a lot of astronomy accounts and sometimes when you're checking into the thing, it's like, oh, let me see what else is going on. It's like, oh, I've been looking through astronomy accounts for the last 20 minutes. You go to the Explorer page, you're seeing stuff about the uh, the lunar eclipse coming and the, this, uh, other shit going on. And He's oh, look, trying, there's more girls with fake dead dolls trying to... Eric's uh, just trying to watch carnival rides. Yeah. And I'm all just of a trying sudden, to watch girls on the slingshot ride who are screaming and the wind's flipping their shirts up and down. That- that's been popping up in mine a lot lately. I'm so too. glad like, I introduced Eric that to your something? algorithm. <laughs> it just shows up. It's so fantastic. Here's another like gravity little, doing its work, and you're here's just like, another ah, little tip. Boop. The main account that's doing that. Here's how you know if you can if it's worth watching and waiting, mm. or if it's a waste of your time. Read the description. Okay. When he writes the description, he'll say another cute uh, slingshot video. If it's that, it just means the girl's kind of cute. Maybe the boobs press a little bit, but you're not seeing anything. Yeah, if that line is there, you're not seeing anything. Oh, so if, just move on quickly? Yeah. If you see yeah. the other lines where he's describing and that cute's not in there, then that's the one where the shirt's flying into their head and their boobs gotcha. are flying all over the place. Just a little tip from uh, from your Uncle Eric there. <laughs> all right. Um, nah, that's it. We, we've gone yeah, way too good. long tonight. We are done. We do need to get out of here. All right. I think we covered everything. I will do the McDonald's. McDonald's is making a deal with Krispy Kreme. I don't know yeah. why, but probably for their Cosmics, not for McDonald's itself. Maybe yeah, both. I don't know. Who knows? 2026, so we'll see. Who knows? All right. Uh, we do need to get out of here. And as always, it's plug and promo time. And when that happens, Jordan, our nation's eyes turn to you. Uh, you can come check me out on my other show, I'll Watch It Later podcast, where we watch and review movies we should have probably already seen by now. We also talk about what we've seen this last couple weeks. Um, this past weekend, we did a snack show, and it was probably our longest snack show ever because we had been sitting on a ton of stuff. Um, so you come check us out on YouTube on All Watch It Later podcast. That's how you get it moist. Um, and then Instagram it at Watch Later Pod. Ham. We do get rib shit on ham. Um, at Watch Later Pod on Instagram. And if you want to come say hi to me, you can find me at Jinxed Ronan. 
All right, there you go. For me and for the program, it's Eric Nagel across the board on all the social media platforms. Um, do us a kindness if you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify, any of those on-demand places. And if they have the availability to do so, go over there, leave us a positive review. It does help out the program with the algorithm, gets more eyes on us, and uh, that's always a good thing. If you want to join us live each and every week as we do the program, hop into our live rooms over on Twitch and on YouTube, all under It's Eric Nagel. You can be a part of the program that way you can contribute and uh, hang around have a good time and uh, I think that is it oh uh, new episodes of the consumer are out on our yes. YouTube channel only so go over to youtube.com slash it's Eric Nagel and find the consumer um, playlist over there episode two is up three is going up this weekend we have so many that we have done and just haven't put them up so we're, we're playing gonna do ca- more we're playing catch up we have so many more to go through here I mean we got the brand new coca-colas that we got to try we have all this fun stuff there. There's the case. We got all this shit that we need to get out of my workspace. It is just piling <laughs> up like the trash heap in Fraggle Rock. And it's talking to me at night. Or at least I think it is because I am tired and delusional. All right. We are out of here. Till the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And then the show is <laughs> over. That's all. Boom, boom, boom. He's Eric Nagel. Guys, racism is wrong, no matter how funny and dead on it is, so don't do it, all right? Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on social media platforms. For ways to watch and listen to the show, or join us for the live shows, head over to itsericnagel.com. Yo, and remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. 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 You get the idea. Keep it real, homies.